the national championship game. The dynasty of the 90s may be in new hands, but they appear to be as reliable as ever. Kevin Owens trying to take the lead. Liner up the middle. For the Seminole Chief, who has captured the nation's spotlight and dominated the ACC, only perfection is acceptable. Among the challengers, though, a hungry wolf pack who last year refused to die as Torrey Holt pierced the Knowles for a league record five touchdown catches. Man, that was fun. Let's see if I can do that again. Catch the next on ABC. Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh, North Carolina, the number two team in the nation in action today as the Seminoles of Florida State taking on the Wolf Pack of NC State. And hi, everybody. I'm Terry Gannon. Both the Knowles and the Pack winners in their non-conference openers. Now they get down to business in the Atlantic Coast Conference. And if history tells us anything about this matchup, Tim Brent, it's that they put up big numbers on the board. And reasons to believe that that could happen again today. Well, we hope that's the case because that would be fun to watch. We do know this game showcases two of the best wide receivers in the entire country. You've got Tor uh, Torrey Holt of NC State and Peter Warwick of Florida State. And, of course, Warwick is a Heisman Trophy candidate. He had 53 receptions last year just impossible to stop great routes tremendous speed but he is playing dinged up today look at this kickoff classic got rolled up on sprained his ankle bruised his foot we did talk to him down on the field he says he's fine he's in that heisman race he does not want to sit out on the other side of the field of course tory holt terry told you about his five touchdowns against the Knowles last year I want you to count the number of places they line him up and put him in motion because he doesn't want Florida State to key on him. Big plays, big days, that's what they say here, and he needs that today. For Florida State, Chris Wanky, a solid start against Texas A&M. Look for him to open things up against the pack today. Florida State and NC State comes up next on ABC. One of the most emotional days of the year with an ACC team takes on Florida State. And amidst the fireworks, here comes the Wolfpack. The pack taking the field just moments ago, and now live, you look at Carter Finley Stadium. Tim, we mentioned the high-powered offenses. This is what these two teams did a year ago. Keep Florida's in mind, a lot of that was Torrey Holt, though, for NC State. It was late in the game. They have to prove they can do it early, and they have to do that today. And there is a look at Mike Gokane, and now Bobby Bowden. 11 straight years in the top 4, 10 wins throughout that time. 47-1, only one loss. That's a Virginia back in 95 since they joined the ACC. Six straight ACC titles. He's going after his seventh, but obviously anytime the Knowles take the field in a given season, they're looking at national championship aspirations. Sure, and his problem is different than that of Michael Kane. Michael Kane is trying to raise the level of his players to compete with Florida State. Bobby Bowden's problem is to keep his players mentally honed because they're going after a na national title and certainly are heavily favored in this game. Now Bobby Bowden's squad will receive the opening kickoff. North Carolina State won the toss, deferred to the second half. And right away, Michael Kane making a decision to get his defense on the field. But he gets his defense on the field against that Florida State offense. That's the bad news. Yeah, and I'm not sure that's a good call, and I'll tell you why. I like to put the offense on the field when you're outmanned like they are today and try to melt as much of the clock as you can and keep their high-powered offense on the sidelines. The Wolfpack... Losers last year in Tallahassee, 48 to 35, but they gained a lot of confidence from that comeback, if you will, and have not lost since. Scott Earwood, the first kicker since 1957 in an NC State uniform to both handle the kickoff duties, the place kicking duties, and the punting duties. Boy, you just hate to give a knockout puncher the first shot, and that's what they're doing here. And back deep, you look at D. Feaster. Great running back. He'll get a lot of time in the backfield today because Bobby Bowden wants to sub for Travis Minor. He's back there along with Reggie Dur Durden, a junior out of Houston. And we're underway in Raleigh. It'll be Feaster at his own seven-yard line. Got a hole up the middle. Closes quickly and out to the 26-yard line. That's where the Knowles will start their first series. The Chili starting lineups, the offensive line for Florida State, it's a young one, but this is the biggest offensive line Bobby Bowden has ever had at Florida State. They go about 6'5", 300 pounds. The wideouts, Ron Dugan's getting a start today. And yep, there you see him, Peter Warwick with the bad ankle, bad foot, but he is in the starting lineup. 
Lamar Glenn, the fullback, one of the keys for Florida State in that win over Texas A&M. And Travis Miner with a record 34 carries. That's a Florida State record. Goes down, Winky. Play action. Plenty of time, and he's got Warwick wide open over the middle of the football field. Can you believe this on the first play from scrimmage? Warwick to the end zone. Let me say it again. You don't want to give a knockout puncher the first shot. I believe you're right, partner. 74 yards. The angle, the foot are fine. And he is definitely in the Heisman race. Earlier in the week, Peter Warwick on crutches after the injury against Texas A&M. No crutches there. Sebastian Janikowski on for the extra point. And he blasted through all the way back to the NC State band. So one play, one touchdown for Peter Warwick in the Knoll. Didn't look like a complicated route either. He just ran a post pattern. I think there was confusion on the defensive side, but I want you to watch this. The left hand to your screen. It's a play action. Everybody sucks up. Now he looks down to the right. There he is just split in the zone, and he's wide open. There's nobody in a red jersey even around him. Touchdown work. Jason Perry, I guess, was the closest. He was the safety, but look at this. He just runs in the seam, and Wanky just throws it perfectly. Now, Chris Wanky, you know, there were some question marks about him early, saying he's not as experienced as they'd like. I want to tell you something. They said he made all the right reads in the kickoff classic, and he comes out in this game, and he's one for one. You know, he had that smile on his face yesterday, though, when they talked to him at the walkthrough. He said, yeah, I kind of played it close to the vest in the Texas A&M game. Got it to Warwick a couple of times. In fact, nine times. Had a great day did Warwick, but we really didn't have the big play. We want to open it up against NC State. I, I think they did that early enough. What amazes me is I know the defense for NC State did not want to get in one-on-one -on -one coverage, cover one, and they were trying to run some combination defenses all day so they can help each other, but this is amazing to me. You see the Heisman Trophy come out huh. and, and line up by himself and just runs a post pattern and he goes untouched. So the worst possible thing that could have happened for Mike O'Kane. You win the toss, you defer to the second half, you kick off to Florida State. I guess the worst thing that could have happened is Florida State would have run the kickoff back, but this, this is just as bad. Mike is such a good guy, and he's an outstanding coach. Boy, it's tough when you have to take it on the chin right away to start. Janikowski, yeah, he goes about 255 pounds. From Poland, came over at the age of 15, now from Daytona Beach. And that's a solid 255. He is a load. He's got that bald head and that big body. Looks like a linebacker. Eric Leak, left of your picture, and Rashawn Spikes, starting tailback, set to return this kickoff from the nose. Here's a surprise. Janikowski sends it six yards deep to the end zone. And Leak will go to one knee, bring it out to the 20-yard line to start their first set of downs. The Chili's starting lineups for NC State. This offensive line, a couple of returning starters. Ian Rafferty coming off knee surgery, really the leader at the left tackle spot. Justin Burroughs scored a touchdown and recovered fumble last week against Ohio. Not only do you know about Torrey Holt, who has either broken all the records or will break the NC State records, but Chris Coleman, a reliable receiver when all the attention is on Holt. And in the backfield, Rashawn Spikes takes over for Tremaine Stevens, one of the outstanding runners in NC State history. Yeah, Stevens ran for 1,142 yards. Spikes has to pick up that pace a little bit, help him out back there. So Jamie Barnett now, out of the shotgun, goes back under center and directs Spikes and the fullback Jeff Butler to get in the eye. Spikes, big hole up the middle, and a big game for the Wolfpack. Across the 40 and out to the 48-yard line. Spikes ahead for 28 on NC State's first play from scrimmage. Give a lot of credit to Barnett, the quarterback, because he checked to this. They spread the offense, which spread the defense thin. They didn't have eight guys in the box. If you stop it right there, you look at all this territory he has to run. They did that because they spread it. They got the linebackers out of there from tackle to tackle. They spread it thin, opened up that hole. He got into the secondary and had the big gainer. Well, this is a Florida State defense that is banged up this early in the year. They've got a number of players, and we'll talk about that later on, who are not playing today. Ryan Hamrick didn't get off the field fast enough, and Barnett called a timeout to avoid a penalty. So a timeout on the field. NC State wants to set things up and get organized, and we'll take one as well. The Knowles up by a touchdown. 
the Wolfpack driving. Minutes ago, you missed the score already. 74 yards. Peter Warwick on the first play from scrimmage from Chris Winky. But Jamie Barnett, one of the best seasons in NC State history as a quarterback a year ago and set to break most of the records for the Wolfpack. Only a junior, he's been a starter for two and a half years. In motion is Holt. Barnett with a straight drop. Has time, but this one is deflected over the middle. Demetro Stevens, the senior, got a hand on it. Now this is a defense for Florida State that Bobby Bowden calls maybe the fastest he's ever had. Up front, they are injured, though. Larry Smith out with an ankle injury, so Corey Simon getting a start. Demetro Stevens taking over for four-year starter Daryl Bush. Stevens calling the signals defensively. Theon Rackley getting a start as well. And this may be the deepest secondary that Bowden has had, too. They're very quick back there, and you know, you know revenge is on their minds. Torrey Holt with the five touchdown catches a year ago. Second and ten, Barnett. Quick out, there's Holt. He can do some damage when he catches the football. Inside the 35 to the 33-yard line. Torrey Holt with his first catch of the afternoon in a big game for the Pack. Now they put him in motion. They put him in the slot. This time way out wide. Now watch this. It's just going to be a little hitch. Flanker screen. Bring him back in. Hope you get some blocking. Break a couple of tackles and he's got the first down. I'm telling you folks, he is special. Senior captain, legitimate All-American. Caught 16 touchdowns last year. That's a career for most guys. One-on-one -on -one with Troy Saunders, Tim, who had some troubles in the Texas A&M game. And don't be surprised if you see Amario Edwards in there fairly soon. First down for the pack. Spikes got room on the left side. Inside the 30, down to the 27-yard line. So the pack moving the football on their first drive. Dexter Jackson, the free safety senior out of Quincy, Florida, on the stop. All right, here you go now. You talked about the defense as we look at spikes. All right, two carries for NC State, 34 total yards. That's already more than Texas A&M was able to run against this defense in the kickoff classic. Texas A&M got only 33 yards all night. Rashawn Spikes with the two carries so far for the pack. Spikes much more of an inside runner than Stevens was a year ago. That's more powerful. Barnett under pressure. This one's almost picked off. Came from the outside, Seymour. Yeah, he was going to Holt again. Holt was just running a little short post pattern. But I want to tell you something. See, now you've got Stevens in there, who's a great big guy. He's 6'3", 240 pounds, and he's got a great big wingspan. Now, Barnett goes to throw. Stevens stands. Boom. I mean, they just come hard. Everywhere around that football, they're running and hitting. Controversy this week because Michael Kane said they are aggressive, they play fair, but they really play on the edge. And a big headline said he's worried about their safety. I would say I'm worried about their safety. But it harkens back to the days of Steve Steve's with all the comments about Florida State knocking out quarterbacks. Barnett to the turf again after the incomplete pass. And Michael, can we talk to him about yeah. this too? And he was very he sensitive. Was, to he it. was upset about the way the article came out in the papers because he said I wasn't making any commentary at all about Florida State going after people and trying to hurt people I said they try to take out Torrey Holt as in doubling him and taking him out of the game and he said I'd like my players to play like Florida State's players on the edge all the time well and it became a big issue because of the bowl when Steve Spurrier was talking about them hitting late and playing on the edge and actually crossing the edge Michael Kane was so upset by the headline he actually called Bobby mm -hmm. Bowden and said hey look coach this is what I said I said, I love the way you guys play. You play on the edge, you play aggressively, and I wish my guys would play there. Now, if you're Florida State uh, a coach or a fan, all you're thinking is, here we go again. Same type comment that Steve Spurrier made, and we're sick of it. Well, Alex Santos, and this left is, guard. This is going to be a problem today for NC State because they are not very deep on the offensive line. Santos, the senior out of Orlando, and that left leg that he's favoring. They've got a number of players out already on that offensive line. As you said, Todd Boyle, a tackle out with a neck and shoulder nerve injury. And now Mike O'Kane going to place it down and try for a 44-yard field goal. Wood. And this one is well to the right. 
and no good. Irwin with his first try of the year, the transfer from Catawba College, not successful. So the Knowles still up by a touchdown. Gorgeous day in Raleigh, North Carolina. Some of Tim Grant's buddies in the stands watching on. 7-0 Seminole. Chris Wanky going to take over at the 27-yard line. First and 10 Knowles. Marvin Minnis in for Ward on this series. It's Glenn and Miner out of the eye. Play action again. Wanky throws. Got Minnis come back. Nice catch. At the 45-yard line, now they rule it incomplete. A little bit underthrown, and they'll bring it back. And let's check in right now with our New York studio and John Saunders. It's time for the Burger King update. Trouble in Ann Arbor for the Wolverines coming off that loss to Notre Dame. Kevin Johnson here, six yards on the touchdown run. Donovan McNabb has now just thrown a touchdown pass to Conrad, and it's a 13-0 game. The extra points still to come. We'll keep you up to date. Terry, back to you. Trying to get over that loss to the Irish, I guess, John. And, of course, later tonight, Notre Dame in action against Michigan State in East Lansing. That right here on ABC at 8 o'clock Eastern. An incomplete pass on the first play. Winky going deep. He's got Cole, the other speedster. Huge gain inside the 20. Finally brought down at the 11-yard line. Harrison had the initial coverage, but it was Tony Scott who finally ran down Lavernius Cole. No question, when he tells you wide receiver is the strength of his offense, loaded with speed and depth, there's a great indication. They bring in Minnis for Warwick, then they bring in Lavernius Cole for Dugans, and they don't lose anything. Watch this, it's the same pattern that Warwick scored on earlier. It's just line up wide right, then run the post pattern. Again, they were in a a three deep zone type defense and they just couldn't catch him. Same play, different number. 63 yard pass that time. Travis Minor, tough going up the middle. Host of tacklers just inside the 10. You know, for a few seasons after Tamara Vanover left school, FSU struggled to find a wide receiver with speed. Now they're loaded with them everywhere. See, look at this. Well, you look at the speed compared to the NFL speed from the Combines a year ago. Faster at the quarterback spot, a little slower at the offensive line, but look at the wideouts much faster than those in the NFL. The average speed in the NFL is, as we said, probably the fastest team that Bobby Bowden has ever had. So, and if you listen to Bobby Bowden, he'll tell you he's got a couple guys that are under 4'2", which is incredible. That is that's, incredible. That's, now, they do run their 40s on a track in short, so it's not in pads, it's not on grass, but still, if you run anywhere in the vicinity of 4'2", if you run under, it's incredible. Yeah, I was going to say that he also said for a while they had a trouble finding the speed receivers, and when Vanover left, they struggled a little bit, but no longer. I mean, E.G. Green is gone, but Warwick, Coles, they're the fastest tandem in the country. You had Stringer, Minnesota, and Dugan. Man, it's a track meet. Third and four. Play action again for Winky in plenty of time. Thrown and picked off. Picked off by the Wolfpack. Lloyd Harrison, the junior out of Floral Park, New York, comes up with the biggest play of the game so far for the pack. He just sits in the end zone and waits. Here's Wanky, who told us yesterday he's got to be patient because he has so much more time playing against teams like this than he does going against his own defense. But then just throws in the corner. Harrison was there just waiting. That was just a poor pass by Wanky. A lot of pressure from Greg Derrick on the outside, too. Eventually, it had plenty of time initially, though. That wasn't the pressure that caused that interception. All of last year, Tim, NC State had eight interceptions. It was one of the priorities for them in the offseason. Already this year, they've had four. You know, I, I'm going to tell you, I think the problem there was he had too much time, and he just locked on the receiver and led Harrison to his pro. Wanky going to talk to Mark Rick, the offensive coordinator upstairs now. And this is what NC State had hoped for, that Wanky would make a mistake early in the game. All the different defenses that they're going to throw at him in the different coverages. And they're hoping that they can confuse him. Second down and nine after the carry by Barnett. Spikes crushed right at the line of scrimmage, going nowhere. Big old number 56, Roland Seymour, the sophomore out of New Orleans, met spikes at the line and drilled it. 
the NC State's caught in a tough spot down here. Number one, you're backed up against a ferocious defense. You don't want to make a mistake here. So do you do that, or do you try to get some punting room? Well, I'd go ahead and take a shot. I mean, you're a big underdog in this game. You got Torrey Holt. You got some guys you can play. I throw a high percentage pass, maybe a quick slant to Holt, maybe the tight end. Awfully good on that offensive line, though, and you know the Mills are coming after you. Al well, Barnett's going to take another timeout. That's the second timeout that Barnett has had to burn. They had to call a timeout earlier when Eric Leak wasn't in position, and now you can see Jamie Barnett awfully frustrated because something didn't look right at the line. Well, Barnett, he's got to realize he's got plenty of room back there to move around in that in the end zone. He just cannot take a sack and can't throw the pick. He's got to be certain. So in other words, he's got to throw in rhythm. He's got to go one, two, three, boy, get the ball out, make sure you don't throw an interception. So they'll talk things over on the sideline. While we have a moment, let's check in once again with our New York studio. years on the sidelines the defensive coordinator and the architect of this defense he likes them to be aggressive they're going to be coming after Barnett right here Corey Holt in motion to the far side three receivers set the Seminoles may have jumped across Barnett under pressure going to scramble with room everybody He's stopped got the first down and you're right after the Knowles defenders jumped across Everyone was in slow motion. So the question that begs, had the play started? If the play started, that's a free shot by Barnett. If not, they'll call it back. Watch this. Everybody just stops now. If Barnett did that on purpose, that's a great play. Because everybody stopped with him, and then he got out and got the first down. Tate Cody made the, the tackle and knocked him out of bounds. Let's see who jumped first. We've got two fouls on the play. We've got illegal motion on the offense. We've got offside on the defense. Those penalties offset will replay third down. Mm. All right, there's Holt up top. Cuts up field too early. See before the ball is snapped up here. And so, and then the bottom right, of course, he had two or three guys jump, but at first, he was right down the bottom with Tony Bryan. That's a bad break for Mike O'Kane because we saw the defenders offsides and I think he thought he had a free play at that point so it'll bring up third and nine again and there's Holt you know the secondary keeping an eye on him no matter where he goes today they'll go in motion Barnett got him over the middle got a first down and more out to the 23-yard line Holt with another catch, another big gain, and the pack able to move the football early in the first. That's a 20-yard gain. Holt started on the left side, went in motion. When he did, he took two defenders with him. The tight end, Devon Smith, was wide open, but Barnett never even looked at him. Instead, he went right here. Still a good call. Anytime you can go to your All-American, and he put the ball right there for it. So they moved the change. That's a huge play for Barnett, and it's a good sign for State that they're not playing conservatively. Even backed up like that, they went on third down threw the ball effectively rather than just worried about getting some room to punt it out. Ryan Hamrick, a junior out of Shelby, North Carolina, in for Torrey Holt. He gets a rest right now. Here's Chris Coleman going up for it. Who came down with it? He got it. That's a catch. Coleman comes down with it between two defenders. And another big game for the Wolfpack. If they both come down with the football, it goes to the receiver. 31 yards on the catch. Yeah, but I want you to watch this. He had it all the way anyway. Went up, split the two defenders. Nice play by Barnett on the play action. Then just kind of lost it. He's got a tall receiver who's 6'3", going up against a 5'11", and 6-footer. And look, see? The ball's on his chest. They don't start wrestling away until he's on the ground. First and 10 for the Wolfpack. Deshaun spikes over the right side and down to the 41-yard line. Lamont Green involved in the tackle. The senior out of Miami. Playing with the knee bruise, and we mentioned a number of players for this Florida State defense banged up. Tommy Polly has a hamstring, and we have not seen him. Brian Allen, a backup middle linebacker, out with an ankle injury. So you'll see a lot of Theon Rockley 
and a lot of Bradley Jennings today. And of course, Larry Smith, the nose guard, also out with an injured ankle. NC State's moved the ball effectively against Florida State. Gotta get this play off. Just does. Spikes straight ahead and down to the 37 yard line before Tony Bryant wrapped him up. Well, Spikes, you're getting a good look at what type of runner Rashawn Spikes is. The junior out of Meriden, Connecticut, straight ahead runner. Goes about 5'11", 210. Already with five carries, 41 yards, and a great average so far. But he doesn't want to go out and break him on the outside. He wants to run straight at you. Terry, NC State had seven plays in the first drive. They already have six in this drive, so they're melting the clock a little bit, keeping that Florida State offense on the bench. There goes Holt in motion again. Barnett with time. He's got to Holt. Inside the 30 to the 27. So the Barnett to Holt combo alive and well today at Carter Finley. Levon Thomas, the right cornerback, was right with Torrey Holt and made the stop. He is such a quality receiver. He's got great speed. Look, he's in motion trying to lose him. He's got the safety trailing him, does the quick out. Now look, Barnett puts the ball out in front of him. He makes a great catch. He's got three catches for 50 yards and truly looks like the All-American they said he is. Going to get a rest at least for one play now. Seven-play drive once again, as they did on the opening drive. Very bleak in motion. Barnett slipped, and then down he goes in the backfield. Corey Simon, the junior out of Pompano Beach, Florida, got to him. Every time Barnett does that, though, you know there's a deep breath taken on the sidelines. He's playing with a bad knee. He was injured in a pickup game, a passing game, pickup uh, sandlot game. He had his knee scoped. It's still not 100%, according to some people, but I'll tell you what, he looks 100% to me. He's wearing that big knee brace. You can see that right there on his MCL. Tore the MCL and really wasn't effective against Ohio in the first game, although they played in the midst of Hurricane Earl. Eight for 18 as the pack barely beat Ohio. Spikes on the right side. Hit hard at the 31-yard line and stopped. That'll bring up third down. The holes close so quickly with this Florida State defense. You think you have some daylight, and then all of a sudden it's gone. Florida State is going to its speed defense, its nickel package. They've got Sean Key in the game as an extra defensive back. Expecting pass out of NC State on third and long. Brings up third and 14. This time Holt is in the slot. And Tom completes it to Eric Lee. Can he get to the end zone? Yes. Touchdown, Wolfpack. yards to Eric Lake, the sophomore out of Forest Hills, North Carolina. Looking left all the way because they had Holt there as the second receiver. So this time they bring Leak and they send him out away from Holt. Holt took the two defensive backs inside. He cut outside, caught the pass and touchdown. They used Holt that time as a decoy. Got Airwood on for the extra point. And he pulls it to the left. So he's missed a field goal and missed an extra point. Michael Kane isn't happy. But a 99-yard drive for the Wolfpack. They were backed up, had third and nine. Barnett got a first down to Holt, and then they put seven on the board. Here's the touchdown play, and here's Holt, the All-American. Here's Leak. Now, when he runs like that, everybody's going that way, rolling. And you're going to see they use him almost as a decoy. Everybody's following Holt. Go to the backside. There's Leak. Left all alone. Touchdown, NC State. All-American with or without the ball. And Jamie Barnett so far, even though he's gone down one time, getting some pretty good protection from that offensive line. A 99-yard drive for the Wolfpack on 10 plays. That followed up a seven-play drive, which ended up with Irwin missing a field goal. And he missed the extra point, so it's seven to six. Back deep, deep booster, and Robertius Cole. Cole at his own nine-yard line, gonna bring it back across the field. Flags thrown all over the place as Coles goes down at the 22-yard line. 
three separate flags, two at the 20, one out at the 29-yard line. One was a block in the back against Florida State. Then Waldrop made the tackle for NC State, but we'll sort this out. We have two fouls on the play, holding on the offense. We also have another holding on the offense. We're going to enforce 10 yards from the start of the foul, first step. Now, Bobby Bowden's club is one that does make a lot of penalties. I mean, last year, they were penalized more than any other in the ACC, but he doesn't mind that. Look at the total yards, NC State with the two drives. Now, more than Florida State, who had two quick hitters. But Bobby says, we make penalties, yeah, but we make a lot of things happen. And they, they run that no-huddle offense. Doesn't bother him at all. Dee Feaster down in at tailback for Travis Minor, who gets his first break of the afternoon. First and 10 at the 11-yard line. And Wanky wants to change things at the line. Plenty of time, play clock at 10. Feaster going to try to get outside. Harrison had a shot at him, but couldn't wrap him up. And Dee Feaster made the most of things. Got all of that at his own, as a matter of fact. Out to the 23 and an old first down. Talking with Bobby Bowden this week and Mark Rick, he says, you know, he says, we're going to give more responsibility to Chris Wanky. We're going to let him make more check with me's at the line and check into things because last week, looking at the film against Texas A&M, we stayed fairly conservative. He said, but Wanky was 100%. Everyone where he changed, it was the right call. So they said, we're going to give him more responsibility, and you saw him checking out of a play right there. Thad Busby watching somewhere saying, why didn't I get that responsibility and freedom when I started out? Wanky did much more to start his career. Overthrows Coles this time. It was well covered by Harrison. But when you're 26 years old, you and I spent time with him yesterday down on the field. There's just a confidence and a maturity that comes across with Wanky. Oh, I, I guess there's no question about that. I mean, he had that career, you know, in, in baseball and then finally came back to college. And right now he's older than 10 NFL starters who were four and six last year combined, actually, in the NFL. But that's, uh, it is amazing. But he's a smart guy. He's huge and a draft pick waiting to happen. Puts it back to Feaster on the left side. Another good game, but then he's drilled. Jason Perry, the free safety, got there and had some fun at the end of the play. So Feaster getting the playing time early for Travis Miner, who had 34 carries, as we mentioned, in the kickoff class. See the game that Miner had against... Texas A&M in the kickoff classic. Feaster had five carries, no yards, and then the other guys didn't even touch it. There's Travis on the sideline. Winning to get back in. So it's third and five. Winky out of the shotgun, going to swing out of the backfield. Feaster not going to get there. Brought down at the 27. And that'll bring up fourth down for the Noel. Good pressure that time by Greg Derrick, too. He got his big hands up there. He's 6'6 and has a big wide span. They don't think they're going to get a lot of sacks, but they do want to change what Wanky's doing. Look at number three, get that hand up in the air. Makes him throw a little bit behind him, which slows him up a little bit. So it brings up fourth and six. Keith Cottrell, the sophomore who started last year. There's Torrey Holt back at his own 28-yard line. Special teams, one of the strengths of this Florida State team run. Good punt. Holt going to come up to the 32. Doesn't call for the first catch and a flag is thrown. Still on his feet is Torrey Holt. Going to cut it back. Holt inside the 20. To the corner of the end zone. He's going to score. He's phenomenal. And I think the penalty is against Florida State for being in the two-yard circle. They didn't give him enough room to carry it. Well, wait, make and, the catch. wait and see, but I think you're right. There was a man within the two-yard restricted area Holt brought it all the way back I don't know there were some blockers down there that were fooling around too let's wait and see I think they encroached on it from a placement on the two yard belt the penalty is refused they have a touchdown encroachment of the two yard belt 
Folks, that guy right there is terrific. 68 yards on the punt return for Torrey Holt. That's as good a punt return as you're ever going to see. Take another look. All right, first of all, you can see they're in the two-yard circle right there. All right, he catches it anyway. No fair catch. Now watch the balance he has and the vision that he has as well. Gets to the outside and takes it all the way to the end zone. And we'll take another look at that for the Wolfpack setting up for the extra point. Now remember, Earwood missed the first one. No, no problem with that. 13 to 7. Well, big plays, big days. That's the slogan for NC State this year. And Mike O'Kane talked about the difference in his club early last year when they didn't get big plays, and now they're getting them. But watch his balance and watch his vision. Look at him cutting back. Here's the balance. He breaks the tackle, shows his strength. Now here is his vision. He sees the blocker, tries to get him, knows he's being chased down from behind, tries to stiff arm him, and it just says, I'll outrun him. Derek Gibson, the man who initially missed the tackle. He should have wrapped him up. And that's the man who was closest to Torrey Holt when he got to the end zone. Torrey Holt, All-American, 6'2", 190 pounds. Considered leaving for the NFL, but stayed for days like this. His mother passed away a couple of years ago, right around Christmas time. And he's dedicated his career since then to her. Wants to open up a window cleaning business and a barber shop eventually. I think that'll have to wait. That He's might got a wait career in the NFL <laughs> until after his days on Sunday. Oh, you said both teams score a lot of points. I said I hope that would be the case. It'd be fun to watch. So far, it's been fun. Hasn't been bad so far, has it? Feaster, along with Poles, I believe, back deep for Florida State. Actually, that's Durden. He's going to take it at the 12. Right up the cut, out to the 25. And this is a fired-up Wolfpack crowd and team at this point. But you have to remember, it is still very, very early. Well, these fans getting caught up in that euphoria, but uh, I guarantee on the sidelines they're not. They know this man can get it back in a hurry. He did so on the first play of the game, a 74-yard strike to Peter Warwick, and then he went 63 yards to Lavernius Cole. There are his numbers. You never really know, Terry, but it just seemed that Michael Keane was so comfortable and so relaxed yesterday when he was talking with us, he knew his players were prepared to start this game. Warwick wide to the right. Winky with the pump fake. Warwick going up. He's wide open. Across midfield, Peter Warwick doing what he does best. Running right by a cornerback and down to the 38-yard line just like that. Gave him a little out and up. Terrific move on Harrison, and Harrison bit. That was a big-time move right there. How good is that? 38 yards. Watch this. 74-yarder earlier. Give him outside, turn the head, boom. He got Harrison beaten. His motto is, if we're even, I'm leaving. And he went right behind him and got into the secondary and made the catch. Very nicely done. And Wanky had all the time in the world to make a decision and make the throw. Still 245 and counting left in this first quarter. Minor back in for Feaster. Back to the line of scrimmage. That's about it. Clayton Simon, the senior out of Hickory, North Carolina, in there to hit him. It was the defense for NC State that is much maligned. They took a lot of heat in the papers this week because they gave up 361 yards on the ground to Ohio. Yeah, but Ohio runs a triple option offense, which you don't see very much. And remember, they were ranked fourth in the nation last year in total offense. They beat Maryland last year. Just got beat by Kansas State. That's a solid program. Wanky, quick drop. This one's picked off at the 32. Rodney Red and the second pick of the afternoon for the Wolfpack. Red was moved from cornerback to safety so they'd have two extra cover guys here. Now they're going to try to funnel him. One plays outside, one plays inside. Red, the safety who's playing underneath, just read his eyes all the way. Winky is not looking off receivers. And Red 
just went with with his eyes to the football and made the second interception of the afternoon. Well, he was so good against AM at making reads, and the coaches were so happy about that, but maybe some of that rookie, I don't know if they're jitters, but just to take some while to, to make those reads for a rookie, even though he is 26 years old. There's Rashawn Spikes wrapped up in the backfield by Jerry Johnson. Well, NC State has a game plan defensively where they're trying to keep guys from covering one-on-one. -on -one. They're involving other people. They're running some combination defenses and taking some risks. High risk, high reward. Well, they've got two interceptions, but they've given up some great big plays, including the touchdown to work. Two key turnovers to two picks by NC State. He's got the touchdown on one, stop the drive on that drive. Great drop, has time out to Coleman. Finally run out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Demetro Stevens and a couple of other Florida State tacklers in there to run him out. You know, one of the things they were telling Barnett at practice when we were watching him this week is the fact that Florida State comes hard. So you have to throw in rhythm, you have to throw on time. So he goes one, two, three, four, five step, drop, step up, and throw. He does it before the pressure gets there. If he does that all day and makes good decisions, they're going to have some success. Third down and a long four for Mike O'Kane's offense right now. This is where the Knowles come after you. No pressure that time. That one's dropped. That was a first down for Devon Smith, the tight end, if he could have just held on to the football. The senior out of Ahoski, North Carolina, would love to get that one back. So Earwood will come on and punt it away to Dee Feaster who is a dangerous return man. Here come the Knowles. Irwood just does get it off, and he got it off quickly. It's an NC State bounce inside the 15 to the 13-yard line. The breaks going the away of the Wolfpack the right line. now. A 49-yard punt, and obviously no return. That's one of those situations where Irwood was just trying to get it off quickly before the, yeah. the block got there. And by doing that, he pushed it down the right side, got a good good bounce to it. Irwood started out as a place kicker and then went to a punter. And it's come on. There's the offensive production so far. Look at all the plays so far. And 196 for Florida State and the touchdown. But already eight plays over 20 yards. It was a big play game. Yeah, and that's at high risk high reward defense to play. Winky can operate out of the shotgun now. Travis Hunter is outside. It may have a first down for the Seminole. Nifty move to the outside and the speed getting around the corner. Every running back in high school should watch these kids in this game, especially on the Florida State side, as running backs. Spikes does it too. But, I mean, they read their blocks and they make their cuts accordingly and explode once they see the opening. Well, Miner had a good one to learn from. Warwick Dunn, like a Catholic high school in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, but in a year plus now, he's already made a name for himself. Going to try the same play, going to get outside once again. And another first down for the Seminoles. So they'll move the change. And this is what Mike O'Kane talked to you and I about. He said, we can't let them get the five yards, the seven yards, the ten yards at a clip. And pretty soon they bust off a long one. That's twice in a row they've shut down the middle. But being the fine running back he is, he reads it, bounces outside. He got a good block from Dugans and took it up the sideline. Twelve yards on the carry. They'll move the change. 47 left until the end of the first quarter. Again, trying the left side, different results this time. He's dropped in the backfield as Bobby Cotton, the leader of the defensive front for NC State, tripped him up. You know, Chris Winky is an older guy, 26, but he's not that experienced. Played baseball, came back, and actually just kind of worked on the sidelines in the practice last year. But you see the two fumbles he had against Texas A&M and two interceptions today. So he's still trying to knock the rust off from the years that he was away with the other sport. 
under pressure this time and overthrows Marvin Minnick. It was open over the middle of the field, but Winky was rushed by the pressure. Again, NC State's game plan was to put some pressure on him. They say we may not get the sacks, but we notice that when he does feel pressure, he will throw the ball high at times. Now look at this. I'm telling you something. Bobby Cotton has gotten pressure. They've gotten pressure from the inside from Bryant. And that ball was high. Way outside to use one of his terms. William Pinnell, the redshirt freshman, applying the pressure that time. Three freshman linebackers for NC State for a time in the game against Ohio. The young defense. This one dropped by Travis Miner. But again, they were chasing Wanky, and Wanky threw it at his feet. Miner probably should have had it, but it was a tough catch because it was a poor throw. But a tough afternoon so far for Chris Wanky. Watch this. Again, you know, they're trying to set up the screen, so the pressure naturally is going to come. Linebacker gets in there, see? Right around the knees. Actually, had to reach back for it. Yeah, if he catches that ball, too, it, it slows him up. Trying to get out to the lineman ahead. So, most likely, the last play of the first quarter. Control just gets it off. Corey Holt, who's run one back already. Going to cut it back. Holt to the 36-yard line. Pretty good field position again for the Wolfpack after the 41-yard punt by Cottrell in the 13-yard return for Torrey Holt. They're fired up at Carter Finley in Raleigh. The Wolfpack ahead of the Knolls, 13 to 7. Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series. Set to open up the second quarter in Raleigh, Terry Gannon, Tim Brandt, as you look at Chris Winky, who had a marvelous start with a 74-yard touchdown pass on the first play from scrimmage to Peter Warwick, but has struggled since then. But the story of the game is NC State. They really did dominate the quarter outside of those few big plays. There's a look at Mark Richt up in the booth. He's the offensive coordinator. And, of course, those interceptions didn't help. But I'll tell you this, NC State, when you think of the last three quarters last year's game and this quarter, have outscored... Florida State 48 to 27. And that stat coming via Les Robinson, <laughs> the athletic director at NC State. First play overthrows the intended receiver. Les dropping that off. We'll expect Dave Hart to come in with a stat in well, a little bit. Well, we were, had the privilege of doing last year's game down in Tallahassee. And Florida State went up big. And then NC State scored 35 points on those five touchdown catches by Holt and then outscored them in that quarter. So four straight quarters, they've outscored them. And it's a defense for Bobby Bowden that. The secondary men, take Cody especially, had some comments this week that they were going to take Torrey Holt out of this game and they were going to shut down Torrey Holt. And obviously that's exactly what they're trying to do, but Holt having a big day, including a punt return for a touchdown. There's a fullback, Harold Jackson, out of the backfield. Straight pass across midfield. The Wolfpack moving the football at will, it seems, against this Florida State defense. That's been the biggest surprise so far this game. Had the big guys in there. They ran the wide receiver off, and they sent the fullback right down here in the flat. Brought him in right off the tackle, out into the flat. Now watch the block he gets out in front of him. Boom! That's the big tight end, Smith, who gave him the block and let him pick up three extra yards, so they moved the chains again, and NC State continues to move the ball effectively on offense. Well, the Seminoles had, what, 12 days to get ready for this game, and that's the worst thing that they could have because they, they beat each other up in practice. That's where they got all their injuries for the most part. The freshman, Ray Robinson, scampers down to the 41-yard line. Robinson from Hilton Head High School in Hilton Head, South Carolina. Well, it is time now for our AFLAC trivia question. Here's this week's question. What ACC team has the current longest winning streak? Hmm. Come back in a couple of minutes, give you the answer. Great question. Doesn't pay to play a bowl game. I'll give, that's the only hint I'll give you. Oh, that was huge. There goes Robinson over the left side. Just gave it away. Maybe <laughs> about a yard shy of a first down. I would like people to be successful. Be able to answer these questions. I want to play Jeopardy with you. Longest current winning streak. 13-28 and counting. And after the first play from scrimmage, Tim, it looked like Florida State would have about 21, 28 points just going into the second quarter. 
but NC State able to come up with a couple of big interceptions to stop their drive. Holt in motion this time. Barnett, oh, threw it right in back of him. Well, he got a hand on it, but it was a little bit... You know, actually, that ball should have been caught. You think so? And what a great route. They sent him in motion, and they've been sending him to the outside. Watch this. Here he comes in motion right here. Now he's going to go and then come back like that. Watch this. And just leaves the defensive back there. Now watch. See the ball? A little bit behind him, but and it was thrown too hard, too. But Barnett, yeah, Barnett's been pretty sharp today. You know that? In 19 starts, he's thrown for 200 or more yards 12 times. He's going to get maybe that today. Well, if he goes on to put up the same numbers this year and next year in his senior year. He would project to be in the top three all-time in ACC. No. Airwood's kick inside the five. Boy, Wolfpack getting the breaks. 35-yard punt. And Jackson, the fullback, down there. So Airwood maybe making up for the next extra point a little bit. And the Knowles trying to get some offense going now. The right score, 13 to 7. NC State on top of Florida State. 1256 left until halftime. So far, the story has been the NC State offense and the two interceptions thrown by Chris Winkie. Four of ten. The two big pass plays to Peter Warwick and Lavernia's Cole, but that's been it. Winky gonna pitch it back. Liner looking for room. Still up and out to the seven-yard line. Well, Winky, the starter, of course, one of the reasons because Dan Kendra went down with the knee injury in the spring. Kendra, the man who was supposed to take over as the quarterback, look at the hit by Bradley Jennings that tore the ACL on Kendra's knee. It would end his career as a quarterback, at least. He'll come back as a fullback. A lot of people really were concerned because they said, you know, he hit him high. They don't know how he injured his knee, but what happened is with the impact, his cleat was caught and twisted the knee and tore the ACL. Then had that offseason, or over the summer, had that problem with some explosives in his home. And that blew up. So he's not back. But he's going to be a fullback when he comes back. There goes Lavernius Coles on the reverse. Outside of the one tackler, trying to get to the first down. He may be there. He's out to the 13 yard line, maybe the 14. Rodney Red ran him out. Going back to Dan Kendra for a second, we were talking with Mark Rick, the offensive coordinator, earlier this week, and he said, you know what? He's going to make a terrific fullback in the pros. You really believe that? As soon as the pros look at him, he's the prototypical fullback for the NFL. I had to look at Mark Rick, and he's the guy who's orchestrated in the offense for all the success they've had over the last several years. He says Kendra will be a great NFL fullback. Well, Cole's just shy of the first down on that last reverse. A dangerous play to run near your goal line, but we've seen Bobby Bowden do it throughout his career. Straight ahead goes Wanky, still fighting to get there. You got the scrum going on, and we'll have to wait and see where they mark it. Looked like he had enough forward motion to get there, and he did. It's a first down for the Knoll. Well, there's no question that Dan Kendra is one of the great athletes on any college campus. You just look at the guy and you know, what he has been able to do in all the tests. And when he gets to the NFL Combine, as you said, I think his stock will go up even further after his career at Florida State. you got to feel sorry for the guy, though, coming out of high school, number one quarterback in the country and never getting a chance to take the range for Bobby Bowden. On first down, Wanky under pressure is going to overthrow Warwick. Well, he has been overthrowing his receivers throughout the day. He has not been sharp. Second down and 10. Flags on the play. Complete Ron Dugan's his first catch of the afternoon in a lot. On the far sideline, across the 40 to the 41, Dugans, who can get up about 44 inches. Leighton White made the stop a gain of 25, but we'll check out the flag. And they're going to bring it back. Offensively, Florida State is really struggling right now. Chris Wanky is just out of sync. The offense is not concentrated. They have a mental so breakdown. Still in the formation on the offense. A five-yard penalty. We'll replay the there. This is going to drive Bobby Bowden crazy because these are just mental mistakes that Florida State normally doesn't make. And if they have aspirations of another national championship, which certainly he does, he think, thinks this is as 
talented and as fast a club as he's ever had. Well, this is the stuff that's going to kill him, so he's going to be upset. Winky has missed his last four passes. And Florida State has talked about trying to establish the ground game with Feaster and Miner. And then we'll do it a little bit with Feaster today. But not much going on elsewhere. Here goes Travis Miner trying to get that going. Fill up. Strong run out to the 24-yard line. Gain of 14 as you look at the power that time of Travis Miner. He had 34 carries against Texas A&M in a career-high 146 yards. Great freshman year. Surprised at his power. Look at him, just dragging tacklers and keeping his feet. He's got that low center of gravity, but he was just dragging McCurdy, who's 265 pounds, with him. ACC Rookie of the Year last season. As he started as a freshman. 46 yards in the afternoon, almost six yards per carry. Winky's going to burn a timeout as the play clock was running down. So it'll be third and one for the Seminoles with 10.24 left until halftime when we come back to Raleigh. Budweiser. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Fort Taurus. Ford built to last. Solomon Smith Barney. Let's get to work. Success is earned. Burger King, if you ask us, it just tastes better. And Brewery Fresh Budweiser, who reminds you, fresh beer tastes better. Among the trees here in Raleigh, Carter Finley Stadium, which they are actually about to improve with the basketball arena going up right next door. And right now, it's Chris Wanky trying to complete a third and one for the Seminoles and get some momentum in this first half. They have given it all the way back to NC State after they opened up strongly. Well, fullback Len going to go straight ahead and knock down at the line of scrimmage. We'll have to wait and see. You know, I don't think he got it, Terry. I don't either. He was met at the line of scrimmage, depending on the mark. I don't think he, he had to cross or at least touch the 25-yard line, and I don't think he got it. Well, they called the timeout, and that's what they came up with to give it to Glenn, which is uh, you're going to give it to your fullback at 235 pounds and try to get the first down. Makes sense to me, but that Wolfpack line, which has been very thin so far this year, playing well today. Well, LeVar Fisher tagged him pretty good. He got the first. Uh, you now, if you look at the mark on the sidelines, the mark in the chain says he had to get to the 25. The nose of that ball was just short. So Mike's saying, wait a minute, would that chain get shortened on it? Now, Michael Kane was given a contract extension, even though a lot of people called for his job late last year. Then he came back against Florida State and then won three in a row to end the season and go six and five and at least be bowl eligible. But he said now that he's been given an extension, he feels more pressure than he did a year ago to prove that they made the right decision. Warwick on the reverse. Cotton almost had him. But there goes Peter Warwick up the far sideline. Driven out of bounds about the 40-yard line. So the second time we've seen Bobby Bowden and Mark Rick go to that play, the first time to Laverne is Cole. Well, you're not losing any speed with Peter Warwick, I'll tell you that. No. You have the big guy coming our way. He's going to try to draw all the attention now. Here comes number nine, Warwick, the Heisman Trophy candidate. Here's a guy that's averaged 18 yards every time he touches the ball for his career. He's got that speed. He can break some tackles, outrun some folks. And an eight for the Heisman Trophy. First down, look at what the Knowles have done. And NC State up around eight yards on first down. Minor out to the 45. Well, tomorrow at 3 Eastern here on ABC, we'll bring you the Comfort Classic in the Brickyard Crossing Golf Course in Speedway, Indiana. Senior PGA event, Hale Irwin, Lee Trevino, Gil Morgan, defending champion David Graham. By the way, Irwin and Morgan have six wins apiece this year on the Senior Tour. That's tomorrow on ABC. Ninth play of the drive for Wanky in the Knoll. Plenty of time throws behind Ron Dugans. 
Again, Winky with the receiver open. He was wide open, and he just threw it behind him. They took the fullback out. They added a receiver. They spread the field. He's just not rolling well right now. He knows he's struggling. Brian's in right now. Well, we gave you the Aflac trivia question a few moments ago. What ACC team has the current longest winning streak? My hint? Yeah, your hit is the hit of the century. Doesn't pay to go to a bowl game. North Carolina State has won four games now with a win this year against Ohio and the three to close out the year. Big third down here for NC State. Third and three. Winky with a straight drop. And incomplete, almost picked off by Rodney Red. He's already intercepted one of Winky's passes. There again, Red, the safety playing underneath, and Winky somehow doesn't see him. NC State with the longest win streak in the ACC. You know, they scored 35 points in the last three quarters against Florida State last year and have not lost since. Beat Maryland, Virginia, East Carolina, Ohio. Huge win against Virginia. And Michael King will tell you that meant a lot, confidence-wise, to his Wolfpack team. Torrey Holt racing back. Going to field this one at the two-yard line. Holt bring it back to the seven. Don't know about that decision. And let's check in the New York Studios. John Saunders, see what's coming up at halftime. Up to the eight. Another milestone for Joe Pod. He says... Uh, yeah, maybe someday I'll appreciate it, but right now I just don't have time. Great coach. He's had some of the greatest teams you'll ever see up there at Penn State. I helped make some of those All-Americans up there. <laughs> yeah, he gives you a lot of credit, as a matter of fact. That's a 54-yard punt. Torrey Holton brought it back seven yards. I'm not sure he should have fielded that one, though. And the Wolfpack ahead for a couple trying to get some breathing room with 822 and counting until half. Critical error by the All-American Holco to field that ball. It was clearly going into the end zone for a touchback, and he picked it up on the two-yard line inside the two and tried to return it, and I think in doing that, he actually injured himself. Took a shot on his thigh. But a bad mistake backed up State to the playoff. Now he's back in there. Three receivers set. Leak and Hamrick to the near side. Play action for Barnett. Has time. Back but broken up. That's a great play. Well covered. And Clemont Thomas broke it up with the dive. If you hear what the fans think, the fans think Thomas was riding it and was too early on the back. Take a look and you make the call. You tell me if this is pass interference. There's the hands on. There's the left hand using it to get leverage. There's no question he's on him. He was there too early. It should have been a flag for pass interference. Well, for once, the fans are right, I guess. Well, he's using that left hand for leverage, and normally when that happens, they'll throw a flag. But then he also kind of rode his back. Play clock down to one, and Barnett gets it. He has time to run in room, but he's going to it through the hands of Chris Coleman. That's a play that maybe you see some of the residual effect of the beat. He had at least 15 yards ahead of him to run. And Michael Kane was saying he had that opportunity once last week against Ohio, and I'm sure he's going to tell him when he gets to the sideline. You know, you've got to tuck that away and run with it. Definitely could have picked up the first. Well, one of the things that makes Jamie Barnett an effective quarterback and has allowed him to do what he's done in the ACC is the, the threat to run. I don't think Mike wants to talk to him. They're playing too well right now. NC State played a heck of a half. Deerwood back in his own end zone. Knowles going to set up a return. A great field position. He's two. Back to the 31-yard line. So Florida State with the best field position of the day. See, and this goes back to that decision that Holt made to field that punt on the two. See, it gives them good field position now. Your exclusive home for primetime NFL action Sunday night, live at 8.15 on ESPN. Drew Bledsoe taking on Peyton Manning as New England tackles Indianapolis this week. And then Monday night on ABC Sports, Monday Night Football, 8 o'clock Eastern time, Steve Young, Jerry Rice. And the 49ers take on the Washington Redskins with a new quarterback this week on Monday Night Football. Redskins had a great first half against the Giants last week. And then Gus Barat threw those two interceptions to start the second half, put the Redskins in a hole they eventually lost. And North Turner didn't waste any time changing quarterbacks, going to young Trent Green out of Indiana. 
flag on the play. We'll find out what it's about from Ronald Cherry. On the defense. That's a 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay the down. That's actually a break for NC State. Sure is. The Knowles had the ball to 32 after Feaster caught it at the 40 and brought it back eight yards. So they'll punt away again. And look at the big plays that the Wolfpack has enjoyed today. 68 yards on the return by Holt. The interception right at the goal line. And then Rodney Red coming up with one. Earwood inside his own five this time. What a difference this has made. A beauty back to the 38. Feaster finds a hold up. Deep Feaster cutting it back with a big return. Still on his feet and now tackled at the 23 yard line. So they made nine yards. <laughs> so it turns out to be a break for Florida State, in fact. 55 yards on the punt, but Feaster brought it back 29. You know, as soon as you said there's a long punt, the difference, a lot of times that long punt can set up a great return because the cover team, they overrun their coverage. Gives a little scene back there, too. Ball hangs for a while. Now, see, these guys have all overrun. They're over on the right side. All he needs is an alley. Gets two blocks, and it takes it all the way back to the 23. I'll kick your coverage. So the penalty then, they pick up nine yards, and now they start the series inside the 25. Out of the shotgun, Winky. And they throw it up in the air, an awful pass. And Miner almost came back to get it. That's a ball that had to slip out of the hand of Chris Winky. Winky's got to be wondering what the heck is going on. Look, he's even shaking his head. I mean, the ball was not thrown with its normal velocity, I think, because he was waiting for him to clear a route. So you'll see him hesitate, and the ball just kind of comes out of his hand, but it's a dead duck. Confidence time for Winky. Time to get it back. Four of 14 on the day. Second down. Fires one into Ron Dugan's complete to the 13-yard line and close to a first down. Dugan's with his second catch of the afternoon, the junior from Tallahassee. One thing about Florida State and Winky, these guys are in complete control at all times, even when things aren't going well. You look at the time, and you say, well, you got 7.07 remaining in the half. There's no panic in Florida State. I don't think Outson is even thinking that he's going to get a shot today unless the score gets big because Wanky's the guy. And Wanky is, even though he's struggling, he threw that last one with velocity. And they're still in control of this ball game, even though they trail. But he's got the helmet on. He's ready, just in case. First down for the no. Not much initially, but the second effort down to the seven-yard line. What a spin move by Travis Miner. Rashad Streets, number 98, eventually made sure he was on the ground. Watch this. Here comes Miner. He gets hit and then takes that momentum just to use it to turn him. And so he's spinning like a whirling dervish in the line. Picks up a couple of extra yards. Second down, there goes Travis again, this time to the outside. Can he get to the end zone? The dive, yes. Touchdown Florida State, but there is a flag back at the eighth yard line. Going to be holding on Nick Franklin, the wide out. And they didn't even need it. Yeah, Franklin, the tight end on the right side of the line, didn't need it with minor speed. Holding, holy offense. That's a 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay the down. Franklin was way wide outside. Here he is at the top of your screen, 81. All right, now there goes Miner around him. And Franklin tackles the outside contain man. He's flood control, but Miner was already around the corner. Mistakes coming back to hurt the Knowles. Four penalties, 35 yards. One of which was on the defensive end. It was a key one inside NC State territory. Allowed NC State to keep that 99-yard drive alive. Pump fake. Winky has time. Plenty of time. And under throws the receiver at the 20-yard line. The tight end, Myron Jackson, was open. Bobby Cotton, was. he had a beat on uh, Winky, too. He came. He's the one that finally hit him. But when he saw him cut back, 
He was thinking, oh, I'm going to get an all-time lick here. Well, Winky had time, but it was time on the move. He was having to hop around back in the pocket. Winky's awfully mobile for his size. He's 6'5", 230. But I think that time he panicked. He turned around. He saw Cotton coming. Just tried to throw the backside. This is a huge third down for NC State and Florida State. For an NC State defense that read all week in the papers how bad they were. After giving up 361 yards on the ground to Ohio, this is a different offense, though, from Florida State. Wanky had to take a timeout or he was going to get another flag for delay of game. Third and almost 16th for Wanky in the nose when we come back. Tech leading 13 to 7 and a key third down coming up for Florida State right now. It's third and 15, and this is what Winky has done one of the last nine. Not what he hoped for. Came in expecting to open it up. Well, this is a Florida State team that has been there before, and Winky in the kickoff classic against Texas A&M with all the adversity, kept his poise, kept his cool, came back to run the offense in the second half very well. Plenty of time over the middle. Intercepted. Intercepted. Intercepted in the end zone by number nine, Jason Perry. The second interception of the day for the Wolfpack defense down at the goal line and the third overall. Well, the second for the safeties. And Red almost had a third. But they came up, he was trying to locate the safeties. They were playing soft, he thought. Then he went for the post pattern. And all of a sudden, here comes Perry. Perry and Red have been playing underneath all day. Now watch this. It's the corner coverage, but he releases them to the safety, number nine, Perry. And then the ball's out in front of him a little bit. Perry makes the pick. That's two interceptions for the safeties, one for Harrison, and Red almost had another one. Winky has locked on to Peter Warwick time and time again, and his NC State defense has had at least one defender right there with him, Rashawn Spikes. Tripped up at the line of scrimmage, but he falls ahead for a gain of about four. Mike O'Kane would like nothing more than to see NC State knock off four, five yards, six yards, four yards, five yards, and eat up the last five and a half minutes of this first half and get some points at the end of it. Don't let that Florida State offense back on the field. Corey Holt split wide right with Hamrick inside in the slot. There goes Holt in motion. They move him around a lot in that backfield and on the line. Quick out to the fullback, Jeff Butler, across the 25 to the 26-yard line. That's a nicely designed play. They, they send Holt in motion, send him deep, bring the fullback underneath of him. So in other words, the wide receivers, including the All-American, are taking everybody deep, and then they just bring him underneath the, into the open area. Now we saw State use Holt as a decoy earlier on the touchdown to Leak in the end zone. Two defenders went right with Torrey Holt and Eric Leak wide open in the flat. There goes Holt in motion again across to the opposite side of the field. Comes back wide open underneath. Holt with a big gain again. And Barnett finding Torrey Holt almost on every play now for the pack. Out to the 37-yard line. He gives him at least one look, even if he goes to a different receiver. That's Corey, Corey Simon. Simon in stereo down on the field. Watch what they do with Holt. They take him in motion to the left. Then as soon as he breaks up field, he'll cut back to the right under the linebackers. Look at this. And then Barnett knows where he's going and just gets it out in front of him. First down. He knows when you get man coverage, he can outrun him by going in motion and then coming back across the opposite way the man's covering him. Now, Florida State may have to make an adjustment on that because they've been able to, to run that throughout the first half. Well, next Saturday, live at 3.30 Eastern time here on ABC Sports, most of you in this region will see the Clemson Tigers take on Virginia. Had the big win against Auburn today against Maryland. Some of you, including those in Florida, Missouri and Ohio State. Other games on tap, BYU and Washington, Texas and Kansas State. So
check with your cable operator or your satellite system to get those games on pay-per-view. College football in full swing here on ABC. Jamie Barnett. Gotta like the way things have gone so far. There was some concern that he wasn't in game condition after that knee injury and coming in and really couldn't tell a whole lot in the performance against Ohio because it was a game in which you had to run the ball almost exclusively. But Barnett's had a tremendous first half here mm -hmm. as well. As a matter of fact, he's 9 for 17, 152 yards. But the big stat is zero interceptions, no turnovers, but he does have the one touchdown. And he's been knocked down and sacked, but it really hasn't been the pressure you'd expect from Florida State. An offensive line doing a great job for the Wolfpack. Good to see Corey Simon walking off after the injury. We were just talking about with Barnett, and of course, to me, out of all those numbers, the biggest stat is zero turnovers. And one sack on the afternoon for the Seminoles. Big numbers for Holt, plus the punt return. First and 10 at the 37. Again, plenty of time for Barnett. Will there be a flag? Yes. They were all over Torrey Holt at the 20-yard line. Dexter Jackson got his hat taken off. And he is down and injured. This was just a fly pattern, and they had the corner and the safety coming over. Now watch. He's just going to try to outrun him. The ball's already in the air. Now watch. They're looking back for the ball, and he just runs right up the back of Torrey Holt. So the interference is on Mario Edwards, who is the nickelback. They had him doubled, and by looking back for the ball, and with Holt slowing up for the catch, he just ran right up his back past an appearance. Edwards coming back off that year of suspension along with Sean Key and the backup for Troy Saunders. Injury being headed to on the field. While we have a moment, we step away to see what's coming up. It's an ABC program right now. By the way, Tim Brandt rides around a minivan, right? Absolutely. You got the whole family in that thing. Sure do cool for you. Good to see Dexter Jackson up and walking off the field. There's Mario Edwards. Troy Saunders having the problems at cornerback, beaten a couple of times, and the interference calls against Texas A&M. Edwards getting the playing time today. Saunders started, but right now Edwards not faring so well. Well, you mentioned Saunders struggled against A&M. He had a holding penalty, a pass interference, and was spun around a couple of times. But he kept him in there because Saunders, who came back, as you said, from that suspension, really doesn't have a grasp of everything they're trying to do defensively. I think that time he, had, he was in the right coverage. He was just looking back and ran up both back. Didn't play the ball. Right. So the penalty, automatic first down for the Wolfpack. Ray Robinson, number five, along with Harold Jackson out of the eye. There goes Robinson, wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. Robinson carries for short yardage. Bryant Tony Bryant, number 40, the defensive end, a senior out of Marathon, Florida. In on this stop, we were told actually moments ago that he was going to be out with a shoulder injury. He injured it earlier this week. But he is back in there. And he made the stop. 337 and counting in the first half. Here comes Holt in motion. Got to watch him at all times. And it's thrown to the tight end now. Devon Smith for the big game. To the 15-yard line. Knocked out by Sean McCulker. They went with Holt and they threw back to the vacated area. He is a big guy, too. Smith is 6'4", 250. Picks up 32 yards, but watch this. You're right, Holt again. Everybody's watching him. A little play action. They send Holt out of the area, and underneath, here comes your tight end, Devon Smith. And look at that big guy. He gets rolling. And watch this. Yes, sir. He's got the crowd going. He is a hoss. Watch him at practice. He really has so much fun just playing the game. Florida State going to take a timeout. Look at the Wolfpack players trying to get the crowd out of their seats. 
carry again. Michael Kane's got to be thinking is and this is not a normal situation when you play Florida State, but he's got to be thinking, I don't want to score too quickly here. There's still 318 to play in the first half. You don't want to give the ball back to the Seminoles. At the same time, you've got a field goal kicker if you take your chance running the ball a couple times and get stopped. It has already missed an extra point, already missed a field goal. He can't be all that confident. He'd love to get a touchdown on the board before the half. Now the five touchdown catches, Torrey Holt. We've all talked about it. We asked Torrey to describe them to us. Here's what he said. First one was a real route. Jamie found me. Touchdown. Second one was a nice flag route. Jamie found me again. Touchdown. The third one was just a quick streak. Speed. Touchdown. The fourth touchdown was a real route. Jamie found me end zone. Touchdown. The fifth one was a short flag route. I was all alone in the end zone. Charles did a good job of finding me. Touchdown. I was tired, too. I was moving around all day with linebackers and safety. It worked out pretty good for me. It worked out pretty day, good huh? for me, he says. Yeah. <laughs> There's another guy. He had more fun sitting in the room and watching those touchdowns. Today, he's got four catches, 62 yards. Also has that 88-yard return on uh, the punt. But still, I say the most important thing today for NC State, no penalties, no turnovers. And here again, threatening with 318 to play in the first half. And they've moved him around, too. He's been in motion much of the day. Now, split wide to the right. Going to come back. Down goes Barnett, though. He wanted to throw to Holt. Tony Bryant got there before he could release the football. Holt was open, too. They were going to run that flanker screen that was successful earlier. Look at Holt laughing. He knows he was open. The one thing they told Barnett, throw in rhythm, don't wait. Otherwise, they'll catch you. For some reason, he held the ball. Right now, Holt's open, but instead, he's seeing something and wants him to release and gives him that pump fake, and that caused the sack. He may have been pump faking downfield to create some reaction downfield, but he had Holt wide open and underneath. Sure. He can't wait. Second and 18 now, and Holt back in motion. Over the middle of the field, but Barnett, no time again, and here comes an old defense. This is what everyone expected. Jerry Johnson and Corey Simon applying the pressure up the middle. The third sack of the afternoon. They got to, this is a jailbreak. Got to Barnett again. Watch this. I mean, they're shooting the gaps right away, and the linebacker comes on a blitz. That's Green, 45, straight up the middle. He gets cut off at the end, but Johnson gets there to high him, and all of a sudden, Florida State was all over him. NC State takes the timeout. That's their last of the first half. Florida State, no timeouts left. Bad news is that they've lost about 16 yards. The good news is the clock's melted down to 217. But when you do games with Florida State involved, almost every time when you talk to the opposing coaches, they make one point. We got to keep the ball. The Florida State can't score when we have it. And that's what NC State is doing right now, although that's not necessarily true. We've seen them make the Andrews Club plus many a turnover and bring it back. Right now, they're not even in Earwood's range. I mean, 41 yards, you're not comfortable with him there. Missed a 44 yarder earlier in the game. Three sacks allowed last year and three so far today. Now, do you get greedy and go into the end zone with a shot to hold, or do you try to hit him where he can get into field goal range and maybe break a few tackles to score? I say you go and try to hit him somewhere on the field, set up the field goal. If he breaks a couple, you get a shot. NC State, an average of almost 11 yards to go on third down. Florida State, less than a yard. The Florida State defense coming out with the two sacks on this drive, trying to get their crowd involved in it, too. Robinson caught behind the line of scrimmage. They're going to blow it dead, though. There were flags all over the place. That play didn't fool anybody. They sent no. Leak and Holt down the right side and tried to throw back on... Let's see who it's against. A dead ball. Encroachment on the offense. And they whistled that dead before the play even got underway. 
first penalty for NC State on the afternoon. So not only was it an ugly play and poor execution, they got the penalty. You hate when that happens. Trifecta. <laughs> However, with 2.10 left in the first half, and he told Mike O'Kane that that's when he'd get his first penalty, he'd be awfully pleased with that. Mistakes have hurt Florida State this afternoon. This has been a terrific first half. Oh. What a gorgeous day, too, in Raleigh. In fact, you go back four or five quarters between these two teams, they matched up evenly. Like NC State has outscored him. This one underthrown going to be picked off. Edwards bringing it back. Out across the 40. Still on his feet in the mouth. Mario Edwards brings it back all the way to the 32-yard line. And that was exactly what you were talking about. Now Florida State with just under two minutes to try to put some points back on the board after the interception and the 50-yard return by Mario Edwards. You're playing Florida State and you try to do too much. Barnett was wrapped up and tried to make something happen. If you watch this now, they want him to throw when he's ready and then not hold it at all. But look, all right, now he's wrapped up right there by Johnson and still tries to throw deep. Doesn't have any any power on it. Ball's underthrown, and then it's a 50-yard return. They're going to say Mario Edwards was out just outside the 40-yard line. So a minute 55, first and 10, and Winky out of the gun. Quick out, Feaster, he overthrew Feaster. Ball may have been catchable, but it certainly wasn't well thrown. NC State got some pretty good pressure on Winky. That's been forcing him to throw badly all day. He just hadn't been in sync either. Keep in mind, Florida State trailed at halftime against Texas A&M, too, because of mistakes. Not because of physical talent. Three receivers set, they split the backs out of the shotgun Winky. Forced out of the pocket. He's going to go down back at the 42. That defensive front of NC State shocking the Knoll. This was supposed to be the thin part of the defense, but a loss of 17. Bobby Cotton and Greg Derrick drove Wanky back. Yeah, but they got the push from the inside first, and then all of a sudden the outside defensive ends, 36 and 3. That's uh, your defensive ends right there, and all of a sudden, boom, Derrick and Cotton get a pretty good lick on Wanky. They wanted to fumble as well and didn't, but it's a loss of 17. Defense is dominating in the last eight, nine minutes or so. Bobby Cotton had five sacks last year. He had two hurries last week. He's the defensive captain. And Greg Derrick, pro scouts like him a lot. He's big, he's quick, he's a little bit inexperienced, but he can make things really happen. Officials blowing it dead. Delay a game against Florida State. Too much time to play clock and run out. And Bobby Bowden's club, a number of mistakes including the three interceptions and six penalties so far for the Seminoles. Bobby's not feeling well today. He's got a cold. Mm -hmm. But I guarantee you, feeling he's worse gonna, right now. He's going to light him up in the locker room. The cold is not the worst of his problems with 46 seconds left. My, mood, my, my point being, he's not in a good mood anyway. It's going to make it worse. Well, he wasn't in a good mood going into halftime against Texas A&M either, and they came out and dominated the second half. Going to set up the screen to Miner. Across midfield. Back up and brought down at the 44-yard line. 24 seconds. As it ticks down, they'll stop the clock. All right, here's what's interesting, though. You've got Sebastian Janikowski, your field goal kicker, who's hit a 56-yarder. He had a couple worth 60 in high school. He could get a 70-yarder, they say. They feel comfortable that he could get a 70-yarder in the uh, right situation. And, I mean, that was my point. They'll stop the clock if they get a first down, but they can't stop it right now to get him on the field. The Noles out of timeout. And the clock is going to run out. It is not the end of the first half that Bobby Bowden hoped for. Now well executed. Mike O'Kane with the lead, 13 to 7. We go to New York, John Saunders, Todd Blackledge.
Terry Gannon, Tim Brandt. This is what took place in the first half. Torrey Holt. Four catches, 62 yards, breaking tackles. They used them all over the field in motion. They put him in different spots. Holt also had that 60-yard, 60 68-yard punt return for the touchdown. Again, breaking tackles. Once he got down the sideline, watch this. He's got one rover. It's one skip arm, and he's gone. He just outruns Derek Gibson to the end zone. And I mean to tell you, against Florida State, he has had huge games. The last two games, 16 receptions, 230 yards, almost 15 yards a catch, and five touchdowns. And NC State, you remember, they deferred after winning the coin toss. And both you and I thought that was a mistake. May have been that touchdown pass to Warwick on the first play from scrimmage. But now they'll receive to open up the second half. Ray Robinson, the freshman, decides to bring it back out, cuts back, got some room on the near sideline. Drag out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Derek Gibson made the tackle. It may have saved the touchdown. Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter, first half stats. Very telling. 203 yards on the ground, or excuse me, in the air for Florida State, but the three interceptions, the key that Winky threw. No question about it. They had success, and of course, Barnett threw this one late. Didn't really hurt him. This has been impressive as well. Third down conversions. Barnett, I'm sure they told him at halftime, don't try to do too much. You have to throw in rhythm, throw on time. You don't want sacks, and you certainly don't want turnovers. Good field position for NC State now to open up the second half. Eric Leak in motion to the nearest side. Out of the shotgun, Barnett under pressure. Close with the cut back to Holt. Flags on the play. Out to the 33-yard line. Thrown in the area they normally call holding. See if it was holding against NC State. Looked like it may have been a face mask. I thought mask. it was face mask at the end. There are two flags down. So did I. Looked like they grabbed Holt's face mask. And it is. Watch Holt. Again, he drives him off, comes back, and now starts to slant in. Watch him. He'll break this first tackle, but there's the face mask penalty. Mario Edwards with the interference Personal call file. earlier in the game. Face mask on the defense. That's a 15-yard penalty. I don't know why Edwards is saying, what's wrong with you? That bad call when he had his face mask. Uh, he's saying it should have been 15 yards. Well, I do agree with that. I do agree with that. It should have been a five. Edwards wasn't Ed flagrant. A lot of times you'll go up high and grab the helmet and end up with your fingers in his face mask. Didn't look like he held onto it. Looked like he had him for a moment and then let go. But Edwards, not only with the interference call early, but now the face mask penalty. He did intercept the pass, though, and brought it back 50 yards in the first half. It's first and 10 at the 48 now after the penalty. Rashawn Spikes hit in the backfield and drops. Not going anywhere. There at the beginning of the game, we said that we wanted to count the number of places that Torrey Holt would line up and how they would use him. He's gone wide as a far out guy 16 times. In the slot nine times. He's been in motion seven times. You see the success that he had while he's in motion because now you've got the defensive back, if he's in man, chasing him all the way across the field. But he's had a big day. They continue to move him, and he's playing with a great deal of confidence. Mike O'Kane, that's the plan all year long, but especially at the Seminoles, to move him around and make sure that you can't key on him in any one area. Barnett off a of play action. Got Coleman wide open over the middle and a first down. To the 41-yard line of Florida State, Tate Cody on the coverage and the hit, but not before. Coleman got enough to move the chain. Chris Coleman playing with a sore knee today. He had two catches last week, and I mean, they are playing them soft. I don't know what Tate Cody's doing out there. He's their best cover guy. He's only a sophomore, but he was playing very soft out there, waiting for the push, maybe the sprint on the poster flag, but instead he brought it back under and made the catch. Coleman had 14 catches a year ago and a touchdown. And the leading receiver in terms of yards per catch for NC State. Back near the record for the Wolfpack. Rashawn Spikes tripped up over the left side of the line. It's a good point about Coleman. I mean, he's not Torrey Holt. He's not the uh, first look all the time, but he does average 19 yards a catch for his career, and that's awfully impressive. Look at the numbers for Barnett. Only the one interception that came late in the first half did not come back to haunt him at all, even though the Wolfpack were inside of Florida State territory at the time. 
Coleman, you tend to forget about him with all the attention paid to Torrey Holt, but a solid receiver. Under pressure over the middle to Torrey Holt. Came back to get it, and he's got another Wolfpack first down inside the 30. Presence of mind from Jamie Barnett. He was under a lot of pressure from Jerry Johnson. Watch this, that uh, pressure coming, as you said, from Johnson, but also they were pinching him from the outside, so when he stepped up, almost went right into Johnson. Then he had Holt isolated on the linebacker, so Rackley couldn't cover him, and they got the, inter uh, got the completion in the first down. You know Bobby Bowden lit him up at halftime. I wouldn't want to be a part of that seminal dressing room to listen to Bobby's comments at halftime, but so far, NC State coming out driving. Robinson a step away from breaking that. How important would it be for the Wolfpack, momentum and confidence-wise, to come out of the first drive of the second half and put something on the board? Terry, I think everybody in this stadium was waiting to see what would happen when Florida State came out after the half. Because as you said, Bobby Bowden was not happy in the first half. And you saw him, well, they were off, they weren't really sharp, they're going to come out and they're going to be sharp in the second half. NC State right now is taking it to them. Mickey Andrews, you saw a moment ago. Had to make some changes at halftime, but he's got a defense that's banged up. This linebacking core especially. Here's Robinson again. Had a seam for a moment. Close quickly, but another good game for the pack. To the 21-yard line. Ray Robinson getting a good look at the freshman. Had a 22-yard touchdown run against Ohio in the first game of the year. Watch hold on this play. This is your All-American. He knows the run's coming your way, so you want to get a good block. There he is on Rackley. Just enough. Shields him off, gets position on him, and keeps him away from his ball carrier. Eighth play of the drive, and NC State may have found another tailback to go along with Rashawn Spike. Here comes Ray Robinson again. Nothing this time. Dexter Jackson got a hold of his feet two yards behind the line of scrimmage. Right now, Corey Holt is playing every phase of the game on all cylinders. Fantastic. And when you compare him with the Heisman Trophy candidate, Peter Warren, who's playing with a bad ankle today, right now you've got to give the advantage to Holt. As far as receptions go, 6-2. Then you look at total yards, 113. Of course, Warren had 74 of those on the very first play of the game. And then, of course, the touchdown to Warren and the punt return, 88 yards to Holt. So it brings up fourth and a long three. Corey Holt play. comes over to the sideline because Mike O'Kane going to try a 39-yard field goal. Scott Earwood makes an extra point and a 44-yarder in the first half. This is just barely in his range. Barely good, but it is good. Brought it in right inside the right upright. believe this no momentum certainly didn't switch coming out of the locker room it's still in the Wolfpack hands 16 to 7 and maybe the biggest upset of the year brewing in Raleigh for NC State they just kicked the field goal they're up 16 to 7 the bad news Tory Holt you see him going to the locker room moments ago we'll try to get word on why he made that trip. He doesn't look hurt when no. he was running in there. He looked okay. Could be an equipment change or maybe just to get something retaped. Look at the last six quarters. NC State over Florida State, 51 to 28. And a lot of that credit goes to Mike O'Kane. He has just built confidence in these guys. He's got them believing in his program. He's got them believing in what he's trying to do. You can see they play with more confidence now. Bernius Coles at his own eight. To the 27. Now Sunday night on ESPN beginning at 8.15 Eastern time. What a great quarterback matchup. Drew Bledsoe and the Patriots taking on Peyton Manning and the Indianapolis Colts. And then on Monday night football, 8 Eastern time, Steve Young. And the 49ers taking on the Redskins in Washington on Monday Night Football on big, ABC. Big story there, Terry, is Trent Green, a guy who's never started a game, is starting at quarterback for the Redskins. Just yes. Farad being benched after his performance last week against the Giants. I guess money isn't everything, huh? A big contract. And just going to take a seat on Monday night. 
Lano's trying to get something started. Setting up a screen pass, and it was tipped at the line. It's actually in the backfield. Greg Derrick with the pressure on Winky. They've kept that pressure on all afternoon, and Winky has not looked sharp at all. Greg Derrick, we were watching the practice the other day. He's at the top of your screen. The guy stands six foot six. He's got a huge wingspan, hard to throw over. So as big as Winky is, you've got Greg Derrick, who's even bigger. Watching the practice the other day with some pro scouts, they love this guy. He's inexperienced, but he's big and he's very quick. Now out of the eye. Here comes Travis Miner. Breaks to the outside, got a Florida State first down out at the 39-yard line. Well, he is so quick to get to the hole. And certainly one of the most talented and heralded recruits ever at Florida State. Had a great freshman year, as we said, to 623 yards. Also had 11 touchdowns. Menace. Looks Marvin like Marvin Menace, Menace is, the is the man down on the field that they're working on. We'll work on him for a few moments. We'll take this opportunity to step away. Be back to Raleigh in a minute. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by the new Dodge. It's about change. State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Midas. For quality service at your neighborhood Midas today. And Thrifty Car Rental. Great cars, great rates in over 70 countries around the world. Best of all, it's thrifty. A great one going on here in Raleigh as the Wolfpack lead. And we've been told that it wasn't an equipment change nor was it an injury, but nature may have been calling for Tory Holt. It happens as he just made his way back from the NC State locker room. Got to take care of business. There goes Travis Miner trying to do the same. Bobby Cotton had him wrapped up, slowed him down, and then got some help from Tony Scott. Bobby Cotton, the leader of this defensive line, and there's Jeff Snipes, the defensive coordinator, or the co-defensive coordinator, who told us his plan was to change his defenses, maybe take some chances, but to confuse Chris Winky. Well, and he's been doing that. We've seen him play 3 deep zone. We've seen him play man for man. We've seen him play combinations. Now, he's gotten burnt once or twice, but for the most part, he really has confused Winky. And the way he's used his safety, they've had two interceptions. Second in a long eight now for the Noel. Through the hands of Clayton White could have been picked off. Ron Dugan's the intended receiver, but the man who had the best chance of making that catch was Clayton White, the sophomore outside linebacker. You know, Chris Winky right now is pointing. He's shaking his head. Inside, it's got to be eating his insides out because he's 6 for 20. He's got one touchdown but three interceptions. He got away with one there. That should have been picked off. Mark Rick trying to figure something out upstairs to relay down to his quarterback. This might be one of those days, though, that... You've got receivers open. Winky has just not been sharp. He hasn't been able to find them. Got Roy right open, and this one's picked off. Roy to Harrison for the interception. Still on his feet. Tim Curry up to the sideline and knocked out of bounds at the 25-yard line of the Seminole by Ross Brennan. The fourth interception of the afternoon for the Wolfpack. Again, the ball's overthrown, and it's just easy pickings. I mean, Rick has to be just pulling his hair out. He was hitting his, his charts there saying, hey, what is going on? The guy's open. All you have to do is hit him. It's a shotgun formation. They're trying to give Wanky as much time as he needs. Now, stop it right there, and look, he was wide open, but the ball's overthrown. Boy, I tell you, as soon as you start yelling ball, too, look at all the red jerseys trying to pick up a white jersey. Great recovery and blocking on the return. Harrison brought it back 35 yards, the fourth interception of the day for the pack, and the third interception on third down. Key third downs for Florida State. Rashawn spikes ahead on the left side. There's a flag on the play, though. You know, you have to wonder if it's confusion, if it's an adrenaline flow, whatever it is. But if you look at this, he comes down, he is wide open. There's nobody within four or five yards of him. And then the interception, because the ball is so high, Lloyd Harrison's just sitting back there playing center Offside. field and came to him. On the defense, it's a five-yard penalty. We'll replay the down. And they'll replay first down. It'll bring up first and five now. And Bobby Bowden 
searching the sideline. They had adversity against Texas A&M, and he said he, he looked into the eyes of his players and he found some leaders. They need him now. I'll tell you something else, too. He just walked up to Marcus Outson and talked to him, the second-team quarterback. We'll keep an eye on him. They may go that way eventually. Ricky Collins, a redshirt freshman wideout in the game now for the Wolfpack. Spikes gets the call inside the 20 to the 19. Jerry Johnson may have tripped him up initially. But the Wolfpack starting to believe. And I think there may be more people in this stadium right now than when the game started. Well, Terry, I guarantee you nobody on the Florida State sideline is panicking. You still have just under eight minutes to play third quarter. It's still early, and you're only a touchdown and a field goal behind. They can get that in a heartbeat at Florida State, so they are not sure. panicking. But I think Bobby Bowden knows they better screw on their hats now and start playing football or they could be in trouble. There goes Torrey Holt again in motion. Barnett looking for him. He's got him open. Throws behind him. What a catch by Holt. Unbelievable. What a catch by Torrey Holt. He'll move the chains again. There's your all-ACC wideout. He's more than that, Terry. He's an all-American. And a high draft pack, high draft pick waiting to happen. You're seeing two of the best today in Holt and Warwick, two of the best in the nation. But with Wanky's troubles, Warwick hasn't been able to get much going except for the first play of the game. Again, they're sending him out wide, and he outruns the defensive back. Actually, again, he's locked on the linebacker, and that is one whale of a catch. Corey Simon getting his first start today for the Seminoles. Barnett always looks to Torrey Holt first. But you have to give him credit every time Green, the linebacker, has been isolated on Holt. They have found Torrey. Well, Mike Green is a terrific athlete, and he's got great speed. He's 6'3", 230, and can really run, but he can't cover Torrey Holt. the key for Barnett in being able to look at Holt and go elsewhere though the protection he's got from the line I think most expected this defense in front of the Seminoles to be in the backfield all day wide open in the end zone and through his hand oh my gosh Jamie Barnett and Michael Fushi, the tight end, wide open, maybe just overthrew him a little bit. Boy, I'll tell you what, they were both open. Holt was open, too. He's the guy in motion. I'm going to ask you to stop this in one second. All right, stop it right there. Here's one receiver, and then Holt's over here by himself on the left side. Two guys wide open. It was a sure touchdown. A sure touchdown. And watch this. He just can't field it over his head. Fushi loses it. Actually... When he lunges for it, went right through his hand. Well, he's been out with a hamstring pull, pull too, and it looked like that's what happened. He tried to lunge and just couldn't get there. In any case, Barnett throwing, Holt broken up. Nice play by Demetrio Stevens, the middle linebacker who steps into some big shoes, filling those of Daryl Bush. Yeah, they've been running this play a lot, and Stevens isn't fooled. He's going to act like he's going out, and then he's coming back in right under the linebacker. And Stevens is locked in on Barnett the whole time, reads the pass, makes a nice play on it. So an old stop. The Wolfback on third down brings up fourth and nine, and they'll place it down at the 18-yard line. 28-yard field goal attempt for Earwood. to the right 44 yarder that he missed earlier he missed an extra point troubles continue for Earwood Earwood with the miss and that was a big miss for NC State because if you go up to 19 to 7 at this point a touchdown a field goal wins it for Florida State Otherwise, he had two touchdowns that would have to win. Of course, a lot of time left, too, though, Jim. 6.38 left in the third quarter. Now missed two field goals and an extra point. He did hit a 39-yard field goal. Wanky, two of his last 15 with three interceptions. The inside give to Miner. Bounces out up to the 28-yard line. Take that hand off. They've worked Travis Miner a lot this afternoon, too, as Winky has struggled just like they did against Texas A&M. Not nearly as many carries, though. You look at Marcus Outson, the backup quarterback 
who had a conversation with Bobby Bowden moments ago on the sideline. And he was just warming up seconds ago with Jared Jones. Second and a long two after the eight-yard gain by Travis Miner. Same play, here comes Miner. Tony Scott makes the tackle, but Miner may have gotten the first down anyway, out to the 31. And he did. They'll move the chains. This is an NC State secondary that has played extremely well today, maybe as well as they've ever played, with the test of Florida State. Florida State knows that NC State has played well today, too. But there's still no panic. They know it's still early. And remember, they trailed at halftime against Texas A&M and came back and won that one. That's their belief right now. They place it down at the 32. They give it to Minor again. Up the middle, tough running, but he gets out to the 35-yard line. They've kept it on the ground in this drive. That's something we may see throughout the rest of the game from Florida State with the way Chris Wenke has been off with his passes. Never going to see Florida State go totally to the run, obviously, but... Tommy Bowden may be changing course a little bit now. Wakey going to pass, though, on second down. Got a man wide open at the 38-yard line. Warren cutting back across the field. Peter Warren dropped at the 44-yard line. Warwick, the junior out of Bradenton, Florida, had the 74-yard touchdown catch to open up the game. He's been quiet since because Wanky has struggled. He is so dangerous. He's in the slot. Second receiver in. Always the most dangerous spot. They just slot him underneath. But he's most dangerous after he makes the catch. Now, I thought he was going to give away the first here because he's got to get across that yard strike. Gabe Brown picked up some blockers, picked up the first before he was finally taken down by Tony Scott. He is so fast and elusive and always dangerous. Fake going deep. Going for the home run to Cole. And out of bounds. Well covered. Lloyd Harrison, who just picked off a pass on the last drive by Florida State. Step for step with Cole. You don't see Wanky underthrow receivers very often. His problem is he overthrows them. And when he does it in the field of play, he's throwing picks to the center fielder. You can live with it to the sideline. It's going in the second row. But... Sure. And defensively, NC State has done a lot of that. they played too deep, or they played a man free a lot today, a free safety. The pitch to Miner has a seam on the right side. Closes quickly, and he was popped. Up to the 47. And this NC State defense, if you're Mike O'Kane, though, you have to worry at some point about it wearing down with all the pressure from well, this is a young defense, though. Number of freshmen. Well, it is. Last year, the state defense was much improved against the run. As a matter of fact, it gave up 227 yards a game two years ago. Last year, just 130 a game. And this year, they're even hoping to improve on that, although Ohio took a big chunk up in the first game. Much different performance today, though. In dry conditions. Third down for Winky. Off of play action, under pressure. Gets away. But finally, he's going to go down at the 48-yard line. Rodney Red, number eight, who's had a big day with strong safety for the Wolfpack, chased him to that point, and a number of Wolfpack tacklers joined the club. Terry, they're just having fun around here at NC State right now. They're just peeing off. Guys are taking shots. Again, they bring pressure up the middle, and look at your outside with Cotton. And again, you've got Derek back there. There's Derek, misses the tackle, but put the pressure. Then Red holds him up, and guys then just coming in to finish him. High snap for control, and he gets it underway. Marcel Huff just drilled as he tried to field the ball. Inside the three-yard line at the two, NC State recovers, but Huff was crushed. Terry, that's actually scary. You can hear that hit up here. Whoa. It was number 28, Chris Hope, I believe. To take a look. Oh. Uh, and it was. 
you know, that ball had not hit the ground yet. He's fielding the ball. I'm wondering if he's getting it too far. Oh, that hurts here. That ball had not hit the ground, which means they have to give him two yards. Very close, wasn't it? It was yeah. awfully close. No call. Yeah, at this point, Huff, he doesn't care about a penalty flag. He doesn't care about anything but getting his wits about him. Well, NC State cares, though, because now they're back inside the three. So you want to play college football, do you? First and ten, but Florida State with the roll pass backed up. Corey Hole incomplete. Broken up nicely. That was Derek Gibson. Timed it well. Gibson, the sophomore out of Miami. I think Tory Holt talking to the official about Gibson or someone else holding on as he goes on the field. Look out. See if that gets Florida State going. See if they, if they take it up or not and start flying around and playing on the edge, as people say. But, you know, a hit like that can do that to a team, too. I think Florida State got away with one there. And they have. Second down for the pack. Spikes not going anywhere over the left side. Out maybe to the four or five yard line. It'll bring up a key third down now for both teams as Florida State tries to keep NC State back within the 10 and make it tough to punt. Nicky Andrews and his defense come back to the drawing board at halftime. Quarterback draw out of the second. Barnett with a lot of room. Barnett picks up the first down. To the 15-yard line. What a huge play for the Pack. So if you're playing defense, you think the last thing that's going to happen is Jamie Barnett, who was just soaked in the offseason, and there are questions about his knee, and he's passed up some open runs before. You just don't want to cover him. That is designed quarterback draw. Did not hesitate at all and picks up the first down. And the first time that they've run it this afternoon, if you're Mickey Andrews, you say, as you said, you had an injured quarterback to a certain extent, and they haven't run it all day. Breaking all tendencies, great call by the Wolfpack. And Barnett with an open tight end, nice catch. Devon Smith hauled it in at the 30-yard line. Oh, my God! A gain of 15 for Smith, who started the last three games a year ago at defensive end. Jamie may have taken a hit. Lip it just a little bit. Favor in the left leg, the one that he had arthroscopic surgery on, still wearing that knee brace. Although they say here, the medical staff says he is sound, that he is sound. Jerry Johnson oh, wow. up top, and his own man, and his own Rafferty. man Ian Rafferty, hit his helmet right inside his knee. Good throw again. Under throws the intended receiver. That was Smith again. He was well covered. Like double covered out in the flat. Well, next Saturday, live at 3.30 Eastern time. Here's your lineup. Regional action here on ABC. Most of you will see the Tigers of Clemson and Virginia. Some will see Missouri and Ohio State. Check with the cable operator, though, for the games on pay-per-view. BYU, Washington, Texas, Kansas State. Next Saturday on ABC. They're really starting to get after Barnett. Now he took another hit. This time, both high hits. Knee wasn't in danger that time, but his head was. <laughs> Big hole for Spikes. Rashawn Spikes out to the 40, close to another low pack first down. Mario Edwards on the final stop. Spikes beginning to rack up some numbers for NC State. You know, after a couple of 3-8 and eight seasons, Mike O'Kane was on the ropes. Many Wolfpack fans wanted a change, but O'Kane survived and coached his club to six wins last year. Higher hopes this year, more depth, more talent. And I'm going to tell you something. They're playing with a lot more confidence. Well, He's Mike, done a masterful job. I think the Florida State game a big part of that last year. Mike O'Kane having taken the Wolfpack to two bowl games. He won the Peach Bowl in 94. Spikes pops it up, and the Wolfpack get it back. John Fletcher, backup lineman who's played a lot today because of injuries, 
a heads up play. Well, Santos went out the left guard, so they moved Raftery into that spot and put Borum up in the tackle spot. That time, Raftery, I think, missed his block. Watch 77. He's pulling out of there, kind of misses his block, so he's left all by himself outside. See him up there at the top of the screen? And it's a good thing for him because that's where the ball came. He was out there by himself. Good job. Heads up play. He, too, is coming back from a knee injury. Final seconds of the third quarter. Ticking off, and the Wolfpack of NC State trying to pull off the biggest upset so far in college football. 16-7, all those Seminoles of Florida State. We'll be back with a great fourth quarter, no doubt. After this message, and a word from our ABC station. Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series. Solomon Smith Barney remembers what Bobby Bowden would really like to forget. Wide right, the two words Knowles fans would love to forget. In 91, number one in the country, Jerry Thomas misses to the right Miami with a 17-16 win. Then in 92, the Knowles ranked number three in the country. Dan Maury does the same. Wide right once again. 19-16 the final. Both defeats eliminated the Seminoles. From national championship contention. And remember in 93, Scott Bentley, the recruit on the cover of Sports Illustrated, didn't have those problems right now, though, Jim. Not with Sebastian Janikowski. And remember, because Earwood has struggled and missed a couple of field goals, they're just a touchdown, and then a field goal would win it. So he could play a large role in this game, even though he hasn't really played a role at all. Hasn't had an opportunity so far today. Barnett, he's going for it all. Well covered is Torrey Holt. Tay Cody one on one with Holt, and he broke it up. You know, now that is fun to watch. You've got the All American Holt going against the Florida State's best cover guy, Tay Cody. He's only a sophomore, but he could be the next great cornerback at Florida State. Some say they re this guy reminds him of Deion Sanders. But look at his coverage now. He's got him in his hip pocket. He's playing him inside out. He's got it perfectly covered. The only thing he doesn't do is look back for the ball, or he might have been able to readjust and get a pick. Freshman All-American, his first season as a starter for the Seminole. Ninth play of the drive for NC State. They've kept it on the ground for much of this drive. Rashawn Spikes can't go anywhere. Right at the line of scrimmage, he's sent backward. You know, Terry, as well as NC State has played today, now Florida State not only has to battle NC State, but also the clock. See, the clock now becomes a factor with 14 and a half minutes to play in the game. They still need two scores. As you know, though, they can score in the snap of a finger. Absolutely. Uh, Ten seconds from there on the board. What NC State has been able to overcome is what ACC clubs battle so much, the myth of Florida State playing the myth instead of the players on the field. And at this point, at least, the Wolfpack with a lot of confidence, and that's almost picked off. How was it not? Corey Simon had it thrown right into his hand. You're right. They can score quickly on either side of the ball, and this is one way they could get back into it. This is just a poor decision by Barnett. Again, he waits too long and doesn't throw when he's balanced. He's off balance and tries to throw a pass and throws it right to the linebacker. I don't think he ever saw Corey Simon no, I don't back think off so the line. Either. Only the third time that Florida State has trailed in an ACC game this late. Yearwood gets it away quickly. The Feaster thought about fielding that ball. It was fortunate to get out of the way. 37-yard punt for Earwood, who looks shaken up. Now it's up to the Knowles offense to get something going. The last time Florida State scored fewer than seven points in a game, 1988, against Miami. They're stuck on seven now. Incomplete oh Warwick just popped by Lloyd Harrison. There's an adrenaline flow now. You're absolutely right that Florida State can score quickly. But right now, as we said, time's a factor, and I think NC State now is believing it can win this game. And here's a case in point. Watch how aggressive Harrison is. He, there's his read. He's playing soft, but now the break on the ball, and he just goes headhunting and separates him from the ball. Wanky now, 7 of 25, one touchdown but four interceptions. 
Both backs could have been shell-shocked after the first play of the game. The touchdown pass they were, but they weren't. And down goes Wanky. The sack by the Wolfpack. Clayton Simon again. Simon, the senior out of Hickory, North Carolina, has had a big game. Wanky said he had a problem with patience because he has more time than he has in practice because they don't face anybody that is as aggressive as their defense. But I think he's holding it too long now. And Clayton Simon just catches it from behind when he tries to step in the pocket. Well, Simon was a starter a year ago. Came in, really wasn't in shape, didn't prepare for the season. Lost his starting duties. This is his final chance as a senior. Making up for it today. Wanky thrown over the middle. Dugan got it right in front of Tony Scott. Nice that, throw, nice catch. Yeah, I was going to say that ball was well thrown. 22-yard pickup, and that ball had velocity on it. Just outside the 47-yard line. Catch by Dugan. See, and again, I thought Tony Scott was playing just a little bit soft back in coverage. They can't get tentative now. They got to continue like Harrison did and go head hunting. Wanky 8 out of 26 now on the day. Throws over the middle, right behind his intended receiver. Another ball that Warwick could have caught, but not really well thrown by Wanky. He's had receivers open throughout the afternoon. NC State taking chances on defense, and he hasn't been able to connect. Finley Stadium in Raleigh, North Carolina in the fourth quarter, 12-44 left in the game. Maybe the biggest upset of the year so far brewing. The Wolfpack on top of Florida State, but a solid run by Dee Feaster now to the 43-yard line near a first down. The Wolfpack with a 16-7 lead over the Seminoles. To open up the game, Peter Warwick on a 74-yard touchdown catch from Chris Wanky. But that's been all since then. They've been stuck on seven. Well, and that guy right there, Wanky, has struggled today. He's just 8 of 27. He has one touchdown, but he's thrown four interceptions. He really hadn't found his rhythm. He's been out of sync. But on this drive, he's starting to look a little bit sharper. The Seminoles 47-1 since joining the ACC back in 1992. We're going to have them on a comeback today, though. There's your first down. Straight up the middle goes Dee Feaster, who has come on and played a lot for Travis Miner today. That was the plan by Bobby Bowden to rest Miner. NC State could be sitting in a lot better shape right now had they gotten good kicking games. Earwood missed two field goals and an extra pointer. They'd have a bigger lead. And if you look at this, NC State has outscored the Seminoles 51-28 to when you go back to last year and count the last seven quarters. But as it stands, because of those misses, Florida State still within a touchdown and a field goal of winning this game. Last year, the Wolfpack mounted a comeback in Tallahassee, but they were down too far, 27 to nothing. Ended up losing 48 to 35. And they whistle it dead. Winky going to come over to find out what Ronald Cherry, the referee, has to say. At the conclusion of today's game, we will select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. In recognition of these athletes, Chevrolet will make a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund. A lot of time left in this one, almost 12 minutes. Boy, Florida State started this game, scored on the very first play on a 74-yard touchdown. And you thought at that point, as you said, that they were going to be sharp today. But ever since then, they haven't been able to do anything. And it hasn't been as if Winky hasn't had receivers open or they haven't been able to get something going against the defense. Winky just hasn't been sharp. It was solid in the Texas A&M game, but not today. Almost that, 400 total yards. Yeah, but see, what, what NC State is doing is keeping everybody in front of them. They're not giving them, after that first 74-yarder, they've kept the receivers in front of them and have not given up the big plays. And for NC State, Jamie Barnett's 15 to 30, and he's had a big day. Conference continues down on the field. 
as we try to figure it out. The game clock is being adjusted by 18 seconds. We're taking 18 seconds off of the game clock. All right, Ronald Cherry says we'll take some time off the clock. So it's down to 11.34, I guess, for Mike O'Kane, which would be his, no doubt, biggest win of his career at NC State. Came in, followed Dick Sheridan, who was here for seven years, went to six bowl games. So the last thing Bobby Bowden wants to hear is that they're taking time off the clock. He's got 11.34 to play, and he still needs a touchdown and a field goal. Plus, Wanky's standing around all this time just when he seemed to be getting his rhythm back. Hands it off to Travis Miner. Rolls his way straight ahead. Finally brought down up at the 27, excuse me, the 30 yard line he has been a workhorse though in the first game we mentioned 34 carries that's a florida state record against texas a&m and the split time with d feaster gotten a little more of a break today but they've gone more to him in the second half because winky has not been able to connect in the air 18 carries 104 yards now for travis minor as feaster looks on time. Dugan's double covered and broken up in the end zone. Well covered by the Wolfpack. You know, I think everybody saw Florida State play Texas A&M, and I was talking to Mike Hankowitz and the Texas A&M defensive coordinator, and he says what makes the Knowles offense so difficult to defend is that they can line up in an eye formation and then throw it so effectively, or they can line up in a passing formation and run it, but they aren't fooling NC State, and Wanky's thrown into double coverage. Both safeties converged on this play. They only had two wideouts, two receivers, and so both safeties could come over. That was an easy play for those safeties. Winky had three days to throw it. He had no one open. There's the drive so far. Through the hands of Warwick, and this one picked off. NC State with the fifth interception of the game. Anthony Cason, the redshirt freshman out of Indian River, Virginia, with this one. And the Wolfpack not only believing they can win this one now, they believe they are going to win it. 10.39 still left though. Too much velocity on this one, and it's high. Tip drill, bingo, interception. They're starting to believe. Marcus Elton on the sideline, the relief pitcher in the bullpen. Warming up. He did so earlier in the second half, but now more intently as Winky on the sideline after his fifth interception of the afternoon. Keep in mind, Alton got a lot of repetitions in the springtime because Kendra was out, and Alton was actually battling for the number one spot with Winky. Things starting to get serious in Raleigh, North Carolina, with 10.39 left and the Wolf back up. Winker screen, hold the nice catch after it was tipped. He may have saved an interception. Two things. Time is definitely a factor. Florida State can't panic, and you can see there they aren't. But they have gotten more aggressive. They came with a, a jailbreak there and brought everybody to put the pressure on Warnett. The second thing is NC State cannot get too excited here, too emotional, because emotion gets in the way of concentration, and you can sometimes make mistakes that they haven't made to this point. The one mistake Barnett made earlier he threw the interception and he tried to make something happen that wasn't there. Exactly what you're talking about. The junior out of Roxborough, North Carolina with a straight drop. Plenty of room to run. He tucks it to the near sideline. Got a wolf pack first down and the dive out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Diving for the first down, Barnett. The only time that Florida State has lost in the ACC. You go back to 95, 33 to 28 to score at Virginia. Warwick Dunn can't get to the end zone. So Bobby Bowden, within a foot of an unblemished record in ACC play since joining in 1992, as Dunn was stopped at the goal line in danger of another one. But they're still 47 and one in six seasons in the conference. 11 consecutive 10 win seasons, 11 straight top four rankings. They don't lose often and they definitely don't panic in this situation. 
If you're Mike O'Kane, you're hoping your ball club leaves at this point, even though you haven't been in a situation like this against Florida State, but believes that you are going to win the game. Here again with the situation where Barnett, with a bad wheel, he had his knee operated on. They say it's still not 100%. They don't expect him to run. He comes out and picks up the key first down. By the way, we've got more clock problems. Had to take time off the clock on the last drive, and they may have to do the same. Well, twice now, the clock has not started when play started. Which, and which, you would never think that would happen at home. Usually not happening at home when an upset is brewing, yeah. Well, this one a long way from over, but more action tonight at 8 o'clock in prime time here on ABC. The Irish trying to build on the upset of Michigan. Go to East Lansing to take on Michigan State. They're trying to right the ship. It'll be a huge upset for them over the Irish tonight. Good one, though. Rivalry, obviously. That's tonight at 8 o'clock here on ABC. And now they'll continue to talk about the clock problems. Florida State still has three timeouts left. NC State has three, but it's too early to be talking about that yet. Right now, the defense and Bobby Bowden are thinking about turnover, forcing the turnover. Well, no matter what happens here in the last 10-18, obviously a lot is riding on this when you look at national championship hopes. The future, at least for this season, of Florida State offensively, the Knowles coaches can't feel good about what they've seen today based on what they saw in the Texas A&M game, and they felt very good after that. And regardless of the outcome of this, this game is certainly going to hurt Florida State yeah. in the polls. The only good thing about that, it's still early in the season. Of course, the bowl championship series this year, number one versus number two, guaranteed. And the Knowles hoping to be in one of those two spots. Mickey Andrews, the defensive coordinator, last two times he's come with blitzes. First down, finally got the clock worked out. Well, Jamie Barnett back to the line of scrimmage. Rashawn Spikes gets the call. Back to the line, that's about it. Tough to run against these Knowles. Corey Simon, the junior, who got a start today. He was in on the stop first. Big stop on first down. That's when NC State has had a lot of success on first downs which has allowed their game plan to go in full swing. Then they can pass a run. But here now brings up second down and 11. See, they've got to now start thinking it's second and long and start thinking about looking for Torrey Holt again. Well, in terms of the run, the way teams have always tried to attack Florida State, run right up the middle, right at them because of their quickness east and west. And now they've got the great tackles up the middle. Barnett, there's Holt out there, makes the catch. Holt, Holt to the score. Torrey Holt to the end zone. 63 yards, there are no flags on the play. And you better believe this Wolfpack crowd expects the upset now. Talked about him in the beginning of the game. He had five touchdowns against Florida State last year. They were keying on it today. NC State has moved him around, put him in a lot of different spots. He's been successful nonetheless with a couple of touchdowns again this afternoon. That time, it was just a fly pattern and he outran the secondary. What a perfect pass by Barnett as well. Just put a lot of air under the ball and let Holt run for it. 63 yards. He had a 68-yard punt return for a touchdown earlier today. Five touchdowns against the Knowles a year ago, but these much more important for Torrey Holt and the Wolfpack. 22 to seven with the extra point to come. Forty-seven and one may go to forty-seven and two if the Wolfpack can hold on. Nine thirty-one left. Torrey Holt. The 63-yard touchdown catch. But Mike O'Kane knows this one's a long way from over, as does Bobby Bowden. The extra point, they'll go for two. Irwood missed an extra point earlier in the game. They are up 15 right now, trying to go up 17. Holton motion to the far side. Barnett 
the throw back to the tight end. Smith, he gets there. 24 to 7 Wolfpack. Corey Holt was like a magnet. Pulled everybody to the right. Then they just threw back to the left. And there was nobody there. They rolled to the right. Everybody's looking for Holt. Whoops. We forgot the tight end. Touchdown, Smith. Now, on second and 11, we said they've got to look for Torrey Holt. So we do it, the defense do it, but nobody could stop him. It's just a fly pattern. He splits the seam between the two defenders and just takes it in. Oh, how sweet was that? Gibson couldn't get there. Jackson couldn't get there. Holt just outruns him. And the ball was perfectly thrown because Barnett put a lot of air under it, threw it high, and let Holt run under it. Torrey Holt, with the five touchdown catches last year, set an ACC record. This year, he's trying to pull off the biggest upset of his career. Jamie Barnett, the perfect pass. It's found Holt all afternoon long. And Mike O'Kane trying to make sure his troops realize there are nine minutes and 31 seconds left of it. Reggie Durden, Dee Feaster back deep. Here's the quick try. quickly out at the 34. Good run back, though. Good field to carry. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Coors Light, Frost Brew to tap the clean taste of the Rockies. And Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter. We measure success one investor at a time. We've got a new quarterback in Marcel out. Marcus out, rather. Sophomore out of Fort Walton Beach, Florida. Outson took his high school to the championship game in Florida. Going to throw back the Feaster, the catch out of the backfield. Still up. Feaster across midfield to the 49 of NC State. Great gain on first down for the Knowles. Edric Smith, the freshman middle linebacker, made the stop. Outside of Florida, you may not know Marcus Alton. We certainly didn't know coming in that he was going to get any playing time today. The scouting report says he's an exceptional athlete, very fine runner. Coaches love his ability to handle pressure, and he certainly has that now. Got a lot of time in the spring, as you mentioned, after Kendra went down, but did not throw a pass a year ago. His uh, first year playing for Florida State. Alton going to pick this one up. Scramble and near a first down. The snap was low out of the shotgun. I and think right down there. To the 40. I think right there he lived up to everything in that scattering report. It was a bad snap. He didn't panic. Kept his composure. And it said he's a fine runner. And he tucks it away and he's within a yard of the first. Same high school as E.G. Green and Danny Werfel. For Walton Beach. There's Winky. You wonder what is going through his mind. An awful afternoon for Chris Winky. Miner out of the backfield, a short gain on the catch, but that's enough for the first down. Terry with 8-17 eight, eight left. I mean, there's no question that Winky, after all the buildup and all his expectations, that he is right now heartbroken. He's got to be sick to his stomach. But, I mean, for Alton, this is a great opportunity. And right now, there's got to be a sense of urgency for Florida State, but they still can't panic. And Florida State's not a team that normally does. Three scores to get there, though, and he makes a change. Complete to Peter Warren. A gain of about eight to the 30-yard line. And NC State letting anything happen underneath now, but trying not to give up anything long. What's become an all, true, all too true for the Seminoles now is the fact that they need three scores. Alton calling the play with the no huddle. Second and a long two. Here comes NC State up the middle. Alton wanted to give it to Miner. Couldn't get it to him. Wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. Cecil McCurdy. 
the defensive tackle was not supposed to play today because of a sprained ankle. You know what screwed this play up was the fact that NC State was coming on the blitz and showed it early. They were guessing and almost jumped it. And all of a sudden, that threw everything out of whack with the offense and the snapper and also for the ball carrier, Minor. And so Alton had to just tuck it away. Third and two, here comes the crowd playing a role. Out of the gun, Alton wants the run. Not going to get there. Back to the original line of scrimmage at the 30, maybe the 31. So it brings up fourth and almost three. Well, you need two touchdowns and a field goal. But at this point, I think Florida State, more than anything, needs the touchdowns. And I think they'll go for it here, even though it's fourth and long. Bobby wants to think about it and talk about it. He's going to burn a timeout. I'd go for it. Fourth and almost three for the Knowles. Trying to avoid their first defeat of the year. Only second ever in the ACC when we come back. The Bowl Championship Series is online with live action, interviews, game highlights, and live polls on the web at ESPN.com. Fourth down and two at the 30-yard line. We don't see Sebastian Janikowski. Don't see Chris Wenke. He's on the sideline. Marcus Outson in at quarterback, but the Knowles are going to go for it. Outson to throw. Throws. Almost picked off. But the Wolfpack holds. Either way, they hold on fourth down. And it'll turn it over to NC State. As good a win as these fans will have seen if the Wolfpack can hold on in a long, long time. Still a little premature for that thought. You have just under seven minutes to play. But I think he tried to feather this too much. They showed a running formation with two tights. Almost had his knee taken out by his own blocker. But Peter Warwick was open, but he tried to feather it rather than just step up and drill it. And it was almost picked off again by Perry. So Outson not having much success, even though he drove the Seminoles down the field. But he and Wanky not able to put much on the board at all. Only seven points. That was on the first play of the game. And Sean spikes right into the middle of the pile as the clock continues to run. Florida State has two timeouts left. You don't want to use those here. But you want to help guys up off the floor and get them back into the huddle as soon as possible. Look at this. It tells the story, doesn't it? 68 yards for Torrey Holt. Had a 63-yard touchdown catch a minute ago. Said right at the beginning of the game. The motto at NC State this year, big plays, big days, and they've had them. 315 yards for Holt in the last two games against Florida State. And they have dominated Florida State in the last seven quarters. Spikes, no room at all. Nice play on the outside. Neon Humphrey, who's had a bad neck, actually a neck burner that he got in practice. But he got the spikes in time to trip him up. Mickey Andrews, the defensive coordinator. They've been perplexed today. Torrey Holt is, is, for the second year in a row, is just pierced that secondary, even though, you know, they were really after hold today and trying to stop him and as you look at the clock continue to tick this is huge for the Florida State defense to have a shot they've got to stop him here and get the ball back third and a long 10 they keep it on the ground spikes don't want to take any chances so they'll have to punt it away after a gain of about two you like that decision yes I do and I think it's a great stop by Florida State and now Florida State's got to get the ball back in pretty good field position but, I mean, for, for Michael Kane, he knows three scores beat him. He doesn't want to give him back the ball too quickly or give him anything easy with a turnover. So he's keeping it on the ground, just trying to use the clock. D. Feaster back. You, know you look at the numbers on Jamie Barnett on the sidelines. The Knowles may be coming after this one, though. Scott Irwood stands at his own 16-yard line. Here they come. He gets it away. A line drive kick. And not a real good one. His only intention was to get it out of there, I think. 30 yards on the punt. So Florida State takes over at the 38. Mike O'Kane trying to hold on to a huge win. 450 left. Florida State needing three scores. They come back with Chris Winkie. His numbers on the day, he doesn't want to look at those five interceptions. In fact, four of his last 22 with four picks during that time. 
flushed out of the pocket. And down he goes at the 35-yard line. And a late shot flag. Streets. A late flag. They're going to call face man. Streets is the man who got there. I'm not sure. That flag came so late. I'm not sure there was a face mask, but that's what they're calling, I believe. There was a hand high on his hat. A face mask. It's a five-yard face mask on the defense. Take a look. Now, the hand is high on his hat, but see if it gets his face mask. It's actually on his shoulder pad. You know what? You're no, right. No face mask. And the flag was thrown from up here. The official had his back to the play. Or had the player's backs to his. Never touched the mask. First down in five in any case. No need to argue about it at this point. Wanky. Plenty of room to run, and he throws it behind Minnis. He had no one in front of him whatsoever. All the pressure that NC State put on Wanky earlier in the ballgame is now coming into play. Right there, there were no red jerseys around him, but he turned quickly and threw before he was set. That pressure is still in his mind. The five turnovers today. He had two fumbles in the AM game. Looking for Miner out of the backfield. Out to the 49-yard line, close to a first down. He may have it for the Knowles, but 421 now, and that clock becoming even more of an enemy than NC State. And don't forget, if time permits, stay tuned for the Thrifty Car Rental postgame report. We'll have scores and highlights from across the country with John Saunders and Todd Blackledge. Did not get the first down, so it's third and one. The inside give. He's going to get it this time. Travis Miner to the 49. The ball is loose. NC State saying they recovered it. But it stays with Florida State. And they will move the chains. So you take up all this time, though, getting that first down and more off the clock. Florida State today has had its most success in the passing game when Warwick is the number two receiver in. That's when he's the most dangerous. And right now, that's where he's lining up on this play. Three receivers set for the Knowles out of the shotgun. Winky, plenty of time going deep on the far sideline. Intercepted by the Wolfpack. Anthony Cason again picked it off after it was tipped. Six interceptions for NC State. They had eight all of last year. And a terrible decision by Wanky. He showed his impatience and his inexperience going for the home run when his star player, Warwick, who's right here inside number nine, was wide open. Now stopping right there, there's nobody within 10 yards of your All-American and Heisman Trophy candidate. But instead, he goes deep for the home run, and it's picked off with a tip drill. Lloyd Harrison, the man who got a piece of it, and then Anthony Cason with his second interception of the day. And Winky on the sidelines may not be able to make up for that at this point. It's getting late in Raleigh. 347 remaining. Rashawn Spikes fights ahead. Out to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Even those in the stands and even those on the sidelines wearing red jerseys that had doubts are now starting to believe. I think Mike O'Kane may have le leaped higher. <laughs> I think he's wounded. I think I heard on the jump. He jumped initially. He's got ice on the back of his calf. He pulled a calf muscle. <laughs> got to play hurt, even on the sidelines. This would be the biggest win of his career by far, and one of the biggest in NC State history. You beat the number two team in the country, and you hand Florida State their second loss ever in the ACC. Ray Robinson wrapped up after a gain of about one, and the clock continues to run. They've got to stop it now. It's they down just under did. three minutes. There's your timeout, so they'll have one left. It's been a terrible day for Bobby Bowden. He came in, he wasn't feeling well, has a cold, and now all this is taking place. Well, as much as Torrey Holt has done to the defense, it's been the struggles of the offense. 
that has really hurt Bobby Bowden today. Chris Wenke just not on from the get-go. The, the first pass of the game, if you missed it, a 74-yard touchdown strike to Peter Warwick, and you thought, uh-oh, blowout time. Well, and as happy as you feel for Michael Kane, and we told you the problems he's had, but how he stuck to it and did it his way, rebuilt this program, you also have to feel sorry for Chris Wenke Wanky being the guy that was the glamorous story, terrific story the way he came back to college football, 26 years of age, squared away, and now to have a day like this, the glamour turns to nightmare. You know, NC State has had some great wins in its football history and had some great years when Lou Holtz was here. They went five years in a row where they were really a power and beat Penn State several times. But this has to be, in my mind, the biggest win they've ever had. Number two team in the nation, they will have beat. And you go back to the days of Lou Holtz and those great years and on through. And the days of Roman Gabriel, the great players who have played here, Jim Richer, the Alpha Trophy winner who played with the Bills. And then Dick Sheridan, the success that he had. But as a singular win, I'm not sure you could top this. Well, not only that, but you couldn't ask for better people to do it. You think of Les Robinson and what he went through with the basketball program. The athletic director has this great vision. You think of Michael Kane and everything he went through. Some people here wanted to run him out of town. He stuck. He did it his way. Not he so. rebuilt the program. Plenty of people. Almost, yeah, majority of people. And yet he, he did it. He never lost his confidence. He continued to do it his way. And he's rebuilt this program. Three wins to end last year. And now two consecutive wins, including one perhaps over Bobby Bout, 2.44 left. The awfully tough to imagine a Florida State comeback at this point. It and shows, it shows you the team that had the longest winning streak in the Atlantic Coast Conference, the NC State, and they've just extended it. Torrey Holt got the upper hand today on Peter Warwick. Not Warwick's fault, though. You can't blame him. His quarterback just had an off day. There's a guy that didn't even play football when he went to high school. His high school coach talked him in to being the team manager just because he wanted him associated with the program. It didn't take long to find out his intentions. He wanted him to graduate from being a manager to playing as his wide receiver, playing as his quarterback, playing as his running back. He used him everywhere. Now everybody in the world sees his talent. He's a great All-American. And they're not going to wait for the troopers to open up the gates. They're coming down. You, you don't think they're going to storm the field after this one, do you? It's your school, partner. You know what kind of spirit they have. You were involved in one of those national titles. Yeah, that was in short pants and a tank top, though. I didn't mess around in, in pads and helmets. Fourth down, Irwood on to punt. No pressure this time for the Nolan. The Feaster gets away from it, and it falls dead at the 40-yard line. There's Marcus Houchin going to come back on in relief of Chris Winky. Well, Bobby Bowden, uh, you mentioned it a moment ago. You do have to feel for him. And here's, here's a team that comes in having dominated the ACC. They played Texas A&M. They don't shy away from anyone. Last year, they played USC in that first game. They play another tough one to open up the season and get a, a good, tested win. And they come in today and I think are just shell-shocked by what NC State's been able to do. And you look ahead to the national championship picture, does this take them out of that? Marvin Minnis to catch at the 43. Too early in the season to answer that correctly. I don't think so at this point. But they've got a lot of work to do to get back to that level. I mean, this is a situation where this club has, as you said, never lost in the ACC except to Virginia. 47-1. and one. We asked them if the ACC was closing the gap in talent, and they said, well, I don't know how to answer that until we get through with NC State. Well, they learned a valuable lesson today. Well, the national championship in 93, as Outson takes it outside, run out of bounds, he's got a Knowles first down at the 34-yard line. Florida State has no timeouts left, so they've got to use the sidelines as much as they can with just 2.09 left. But what was improbable now is almost impossible for them to score three times. But when you talk about the national championship picture, Tim, can you win it with one loss? Well, of course, we know that. And in fact, Florida State, even winning it at 93, they haven't had an undefeated season since, what, 1950? No, but Minor what, what they the have had, receiver. they've had 11 consecutive 10 win seasons and 11 straight top four rankings. Right, so the point being that one loss obviously is not going to take you completely out of the national championship. Exactly. A long road to get it back to where he wants it for Bobby Bowden. And 
Georgia, Mike O'Kane, the win over Ohio. Imagine this. A week ago, Hurricane Earl comes through, Thursday night game, and they have to block a punt with under two minutes left. This one almost picked off again. But NC State has to block a punt against Ohio and run it in for a touchdown with less than two minutes left in the game to win. And it was a situation where they were almost dead. The crowd thought they were done. We talked about Les Robinson. He thought they were done. Well, Michael Michael Kane, Kane thought they may have been done. And they win a game like that, and now they're going to upset the Seminoles of Florida State. The bad snap gets down to the 32-yard line. Nothing going right at all for the Noles. That'll bring up fourth down and long for Florida State. NC State, if they stop and get it back, and can run out the last minute and a half. One thirty and counting. Chance for out to the Florida State to the end zone. Tips incomplete. And that should do it. The Wolf Pack up 24 to 7. They're getting ready to storm the field. Still got a minute 20 left, but you're looking at a sideline that grew in belief as the day went on. No one around Raleigh, I can tell you this, figure they could beat Florida State today. And Tim, if you're a Florida State fan, it's hard to explain. It's hard to figure this one out. What a great scene this is. Ready, set, go. And they'll be out there. timeouts left for the Seminole. Barnett to one knee and the clock continues to run. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game, Peter Warwick of Florida State and Torrey Holt of NC State. For Holt, nine catches, 135 yards, but he brought back a punt, 68 yards, had that 63-yard touchdown catch. For Warwick, four catches, 130 yards, and the opening touchdown. Chevrolet donation will be made to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. A Chevrolet tradition for more than a quarter of a century. We talked about both of those players at the open of this game, Warwick and Holt, that they were the showcase. Certainly didn't let anybody down. There are more people in this stadium now than there were when the game began. As the game went on and NC State continued to lead, more and more people came into this stadium as the afternoon progressed. Chris Wanky trying to figure out what went wrong today. Yeah, there's a Wolfpack club enjoying what may be the biggest win in the program's history. They've had some great ones and some great players, but they just upset the number two team in the nation Bobby Bowden. And as Bowden comes over to have a word and congratulate Mike O'Kane, the clock has stopped. And I'm not sure they could get these folks off the field if they wanted to. State troopers are trying to help Mike O'Kane. He's got that bad leg. He said, hey, leave me alone. Just let me walk slowly here. I think he wants to savor the moment, too. Number two ranked Houston back in 1967. Morency State. As sweet a win as they're ever going to have here in Raleigh. Peter Warwick. How you got a feel for that guy? Heisman hopeful coming in, injured. Coaches said, well, maybe you shouldn't play today. He wanted to play all along. Told us he would definitely be in the lineup. Not able to have the day he wanted to have. Mike, yes, can you hear us? Yes. Yes. Hey, Mike, Tim Brandt, congratulations. Thank Phenomenal you. Phenomenal performance by your players. Thank you very much, Tim. I tell you, it was, uh, you know, it's beyond words right now. To hold that bunch to seven points, you know, that's an unbelievable job by our defense, and our offense did just what they needed to. Mike, congratulations. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mike, congratulations. We talked about the seven points. 
That's as low as Florida State has been since 1988 against Miami. And it happened on the first play from scrimmage. 74 yards to that man, Peter Warwick from Chris Winky. But that was it. The defense of NC State, which had given up 361 yards on the ground and 22 rushing first downs against Ohio in their first game, just shut down this offense from Florida State. But that's the key. Terry had started out with that 74-yard touchdown to work in the very first play. We looked at each other and said, here we go. And I think everybody felt that way. But then NC State just seemed to strap it on, and they dominated the rest of the way. Well, not only Barnett to hold, but the defense, six interceptions for the Wolfpack. NC State at 2-0, and Florida State 1-1. One and one. The Wolfpack, as big a win as they've had, perhaps, in the history of their program, is upset number two. For Tim Brandt, I'm Terry Gannon. Hope you enjoyed watching Torrey Holt go deep against the Knowles. Remember, Michigan State, Notre Dame tonight. Go ahead and celebrate. It's time for CNN Sports Tonight. Feeling upset? You're not alone. Bobby Bowden knows your pain. And so the beatings told out today and one <laughs> surprise beating as the Nittany Lions stand tall. Welcome to the show. I'm Michael Onus. And I'm Inga Hammond. A miracle finish for Sammy Sosa and the Cubs. We'll get to that story in just a minute. And two Heisman hopefuls go head to head, but we begin at with the kind of unpredictability of college football. Yeah, already a huge shocker in college football. And you look at this season, Bobby Bowden, the college football world, in a word, stunned. Just supposed to be a formality. Florida State, 25-point favorites going to North Carolina State. NC State coach Michael Kane said, we didn't have a dog's chance to win. The Wolf Pack barking loud now. And there they are, pumped up and ready to go at home. The guy that killed the Seminoles last year, Torrey Holt, he had five TD catches a year ago. Watch him get crushed on this punt return, but he just bounces off and then takes off. What a run by Torrey Holt, 68 yards for the score. North Carolina State up at this point, 13-7. Chris Wenke, brutal. Threw his first pass for a touchdown to Peter Warwick, but then picked there in the end zone in the second quarter in all. Six interceptions for Chris Wenke. Florida State did lay a few hits on some people. Chris Holt, the pop there. But in the end, it's Torrey Holt one more time. Look at North Carolina State. They're up 16-7, 9.40 to go. Looking to ice the game. Great call. Play fake. Catch the blitzing Florida State defense. And look at Torrey Holt. 63 yards for the touchdown. Time to celebrate in Raleigh as they pull off the shocker. 24-7. It's just Florida State's second loss in the ACC. They're now 47 and two all time. Chris Wanky, eight for 29, and a school record six interceptions. The last time the Seminoles were held to seven points, that was back in 1988. Credit NC State with one of the biggest wins in school history. Nobody gave us a dog's chance of coming in here today and having a chance to win this football game. I mean, not a prayer. As a matter of fact, it's going to be a 26-point game or a 30-point game or whatever the heck it was. Um, so it's gratifying. I, I'm happy for NC State. Uh, we've got a great university here that nobody's heard about. I believe we heard they heard about NC State today. I thought we'd win the ball game. We were pretty confident we would win the ball game. Uh, but we lost it, and uh, you've got to give North Carolina State credit. They sit there and beat us. On to Ann Arbor, Michigan. Celebration and definitely the biggest NC State athletic win since the Cardiac Pack won the NCAA Basketball Championship 15 years ago. Florida State had outscored the Wolf Pack 119 to 27 in its three previous trips to Raleigh. None of the pundits that predict football games even foresaw a competitive game. Well, NC State spotted Florida State an early touchdown and then abruptly put the brakes on one of America's top scoring machines. The Wolf Pack attacked on both sides of the ball, reducing Florida State's all-time ACC record to 47 and two. Tom Crichton has more. How do you pull off the biggest upset in recent college football memory? Well, NC State knocks off second-ranked Florida State by dominating three key aspects. First and foremost, Torrey Holt. On a mission all day long, Holt returns an 88-yard punt for a spectacular touchdown, giving State their first lead of the game. Holt adds nine receptions for 135 yards, including this 63-yard touchdown, sealing the 24-7 upset win. I think this could be the greatest win in uh, NC State history, and, and, and a lot more to, to come. Uh, we're going to, like I said, we're going to enjoy this win uh, to the fullest. 
and get ready for next week. The pack dominates on defense, not in total yards, but turnovers. The state secondary has a field day picking off Chris Winkie six times. We just wanted to come out and just every opportunity we wanted to take advantage of. It. I mean, you know, playing this type of caliber team, you know that you can't let you can't let an opportunity sli uh, slide by. But the key aspect for NC State is emotion. The pack plays to win while never listening to the naysayers. Oh, no, they not. They not. They can't be beaten. We sold it here tonight. They're not a powerhouse, baby. They not. We've been beleaguered and battled, and, you know, nobody gave us a dog's chance of coming in here today and having a chance to win this football game. I mean, not a prayer. Now everyone believes. In Raleigh, Tom Crichton, TV5 Sports. On any other college football. North Carolina State got two touchdowns from Torrey Holt to stunt number two Florida State 24 to 7. Chris Winkie threw six interceptions to two. coaches in America hook up in Raleigh, but somebody got thrown to the wolves. Oh, yeah. Florida State versus NC State. You know, just like any other ACC game involving the Knowles, right? FSU plays pin the tail on the donkey in the locker room to determine their point total for the game and then goes out and rolls up 50, 60, 100 points on the opposition. 98% of the time, yeah, but when the planets are aligned just right and maybe some groundhog sees a shadow or something, anything's possible. And the Wolfpack believed a change was due, and that how coming out strong. 25-point underdog, don't tell that to Tory Holt. Seminoles forgot how to tackle. Some good licks, but he keeps on ticking. 68 yards, the first punt return touchdown given up by Florida State in 10 years. And they love it in Raleigh. 13 to 7. Meanwhile, Chris Winkie, the Florida State quarterback, six interceptions, ties an ACC record. He was just eight of 29 passing before being benched in the fourth quarter. There's a good play for Noel fans. Chris Hope, Rusty Russell, hoping he can find his noggin after that. More from Tory Holt, facing double coverage. It doesn't matter. Holt, huge afternoon, 63-yard touchdown reception and. Hang on to your hats, 24-7, the Wolfpack scoring its biggest win in more than three decades, handing FSU just its second conference loss in 49 games. It's a rally after NC State upset second-ranked Florida State. Traffic backed up on Hillsborough Street as fans took over the sidewalks. Wolfpack fans tore down both goalposts and carried them out of Carter-Finley Stadium. They made it all the way to the Beltline, about a mile from the gridiron. Police thought the group of 50 or so people carrying the massive metal posts were a traffic hazard and ordered the students to put the goalposts down. The sentencing phase. I think he locks in on his receiver, and that's a pick. Lloyd Harrison takes it away at the goal line, setting up a touchdown drive. Fourth quarter, still 16-7 NC State. The pass tipped and taken away. Anthony Kaysen there, six interceptions by Winky. Torrey Holt having a great day for the Wolf Pack. Jamie Barnett going long, 63 yards and a touchdown, and they tear down the goal post. The Wolf Pack wins 24-7. Florida State now 47-2 in ACC games all time. Florida State never has had a perfect season in Bobby Bowden's 23 years. Arizona State has started its season 0-2. NC State's Wolfpack football team beat the number two ranked Florida State Seminoles this weekend. Wolfpack coach Mike O'Kane is calling this the biggest win of his six-year career. The pack ripped up FSU, the final score 24-7, and fans couldn't be prouder. Oh, it's insane. I couldn't believe it. It was it's phenomenal. It's great. Game. Florida State has finished in the nation's top four every season for the last 11 years. Perhaps not this one. 50. NC State Wolfpack 98 with head coach Michael Kane and host Don Shea. NC State Wolfpack football is brought to you by Gatorade. Is it in you? BB&T. You can tell we want your business. River Landing. Private Riverside Living and World Class Golf. Call 1-800-285-4171. And by 360 Communications. Cellular paging and long distance right down the street. And hello again, everybody. Welcome to Wolfpack Football 98. Here's what's on the program today. NC State knocks off number two Florida State. We've got great game highlights. We also have a special play from the game. We call it, let's see that again. And a sumptuous gameplay dish. 
It's called High and Tight Shrimp and Rice. And this week's success story brings a former player back to coach at NC State. And Coach O'Kane will talk about the Wolfpack's first road opponent, the Baylor Bears. But first, let's go to the locker room for post-game comments with Coach Mike. But, but to go out there today and hold that offensive football team to seven points, that's miraculous. That is miraculous. I, mean, I want to compliment two of our coaches, Kent Briggs and Jeff Snipes, our co-defensive coordinators. Uh, two years ago, probably a lot of folks in here were telling me I needed to fire those two guys. I needed to get rid of them because they couldn't coach. I think today they proved to you that they can you know, coach. We are not a lot of different, much different football team than we were Thursday night a week ago. But it sure is a heck of a lot different feeling. And, uh, you know, I couldn't be more proud of, of a group of players and coaches in my life. And With one of the greatest wins in Wolfpack football history, as NC State, a 24-point underdog, holds Florida State scoreless for 73 plays and the lowest amount of points scored in 10 years as they post a solid 24-7 win before 51,000 rocking fans in Carter Friendly Stadium. Coach, I don't know where to begin, but let's start with the game plan. Well, you know, we had a very similar game plan as we had last year on the offensive side. We had to motion people, do some things to get Torrey Holt free, and we did a great job. Jimmy Kaiser, Dick Porte, Robbie Caldwell, uh, Brett Simmons, Charlie Fisher had our guys ready to play, and, and they went out and executed it very, very well. But that, my hat's off to the defensive guys. To hold that team to seven points is a tremendous accomplishment. And Jeff Snipes, Kent Briggs, Joe Pate, Kenny Phillips, uh, and then the defensive team itself did a tremendous job. And, and that, was a, that was the key. We, we did a good job of confusing their quarterback, um, forced him to throw a couple of interceptions, or six of them, and we were able to get pressure on the quarterback from a different number of ways. And we, we, kinda, we held our running game in check. We never gave up the, well, other than the first play, we didn't give up any other big plays. Did you squeeze the defense down a little bit, Mike, in terms of giving them less looks? You talking about our defense? Yes. Um, no, we, we gave them a, a good number of looks. We wanted to we had to confuse them. We had to confuse them in the secondary. We, you had to get Winky out of a rhythm. If you let him stand back there in the pocket and get in a rhythm, uh, he can beat you very. He could beat you very quickly with the talent that they have surrounding him. So we had to get him out of a rhythm, uh, and we were able to get pressure on him. Bobby Cotton and Greg Derrick got tremendous pressure on him out of a front four, four rush, even when we didn't bring pressure. Here's a stat that you have to be proud of, and, and actually back to back, uh, Coach. This week, once again, in very key numbers. Uh, one turnover and only two penalties, and the six picks. Well, that's exactly right. Uh, we forced six turnovers, only turned the ball over one time, and only were penalized, I think, 10 yards in the entire, in the entire ball game. That is a key. We have to execute that way. Um, we're not talented enough to overcome our own mistakes. We can't beat ourselves. Uh, we, if somebody's going to beat us, they have to beat us. And fortunately, in the first two ball games, we haven't beaten ourselves. Another stellar performance by Torrey Holt. He enjoys playing against those Seminoles. That's uh, seven touchdowns in the last two times these two teams have played. Well, Torrey just, I was so proud of the way he handled everything coming into this ball game. A lot of talk about what he did last year and what, you know, and it may have been a fluke, but, but Torrey went out today and proved that he's one of the premier receivers in this country and made so many things happen for us on the offensive side, but also in the kicking game with that great punt return he had. Coach, uh, many coaches subscribe to the theory that from game one to game two, there is some, sometimes a significant improvement. How did you see it in terms of the defensive gap? Well, I think on both sides of the ball, we made tremendous improvement. It was very difficult in that ball game against Ohio to tell how good we were because of the weather conditions. Um, I believe that we had as fine a practice as last week preparing for Florida State as I've ever been around. And we were sharp, we were crisp, uh, great concentration. And, and I just had a feeling all week long that we just had to do it on Saturday. We'd done it Monday through Friday. We just had to get it done on Saturday. And, and these guys went out and did a tremendous job and, and executed, not perfectly, but, but uh, a great game plan. All right, thanks very much, Coach. Now let's go to the turf at Carter Finley Stadium. It is a sunny 87 degrees, and Florida State strikes early. We don't start off very well. They come out and first play of the game, they throw a deep one to uh, Warwick. Uh, gets Tony Scott there to bite on a little out move, and he breaks back inside for a big play. And we felt like they were going to come in and try to throw the ball deep against us early, which they did. And other than that, we did a great job against them. 
Then offensively, this is very important. We come right back with a big play here, 28 yards. Deshaun Spikes on the draw. Uh, even though we don't get points out of this series here, uh, it gives us some confidence. We're able to move the football against a, a very, very tough defense. Toy on the 15 uh, yards there on a, a little uh, uh, screen, and they come right back, uh, take the ball back down the field, and then we come up with one of six interceptions. We take the ball from the one-yard line here and drive it 99 yards for a touchdown. It's a big third and seven play here. Torrey on a little uh, a delay route back across the middle, picks up 15. Uh, again, we, we just did a good job right through here executing offensively. Jamie hitting some big plays. Uh, a great catch by Chris Coleman. Chris just really stepped up and he didn't have a lot of catches today, but he had three very big ones, and this being one of those for a 33-yard gain. We come back again, Torrey on an 11-yard completion on, I think it's third and four here. We're executing offensively and converting third downs, which are critical to playing Florida State. Uh, they put you in third downs. You've got to execute here, third down and seven or eight. We get Eric Leak on a little corner route for six points. Uh, big momentum swing right there. We're down by seven, and all of a sudden we're back uh, at seven to six. We missed the extra points, stop them on uh, a big third down play. They punt to Torrey. A tremendous effort here by our uh, punt return team. Tremendous individual effort by Tor here as he splits two tacklers and, uh, and takes the ball uh, for the touchdown. Rodney Red comes up with a big play. Again, uh, you know, we didn't move the ball offensively, but defensively we were doing a tremendous job taking the ball away from them. And then offensively we were able to move the ball and just keep them off the field just enough to get our defense a rest. Scott Earwood comes in, puts the ball down to the four. Uh, and then we come back with another big play here. I think this is a third down and three uh, where we get pressure on him and uh, cause him to throw a bad pass. And then here on, uh, uh, we get the interception with Jason Perry as they've taken the ball back down the field again in the end zone. Again, stopping one of their scoring drives uh, or opportunities to score with a big play defensively. And that was the name of this game, coming up with big plays defensively as well as offensively. It's hard to move the ball four and five yards against Florida State. You've got to get some big chunks, and we're able to do that with Torrey. A nice play here to Von Smith. Uh, picks up about 32 or three yards there on a, a little out route. Um, unable to get points out of that uh, series. Then at the end of the half, we come up with a big sack there to uh, uh, eliminate any scoring possibility. So the Wolfpack is up by six after 30 minutes. Now we go back to Carter Finley Stadium. And coach, this is a nice way for the Wolfpack to start the third quarter, putting points on the board. Uh, of the second half, we really very fortunate here. We should not bring this ball out of the end zone. And the Ray Robson, you can see what kind of talent this young man potentially has right there, making guys miss that at the five and brings it out to the 32 yard line that sets our offense up in good field position. Uh, Jamie, a nice play here to Chris Coleman on the second down and 14 play. Uh, Jamie did a great job there with uh, people in his face throwing a completion to Tory. Here we come in and kick a very, very important field goal that puts us up 16 to 7. Uh, that, that was big points right there, and it puts them in a two-score situation. Again, the thing you can see is our defense flying around. We're getting a lot of people to the football, and then Lloyd Harrison comes up with another big interception. A great return here puts our offense Again, in good field position, we're unable to get the ball into the end zone. Uh, great catch by Torrey Holt, one-handed, looking back into the sun. Uh, just, just outstanding play on his part. We missed a field goal there, which was very discouraging. We've got to do a better job there. Critical right there, as you can see, our good pass rush. We flip, make the quarterback flush out of pocket, and we get the sack. Uh, all, really, the second half, we did a great job of putting pressure on the quarterback. Here, big play, third down and 11. Uh, we run the quarterback draw, and Jamie picks up the first down to get us, again, to get us out of the shadow of our own goalpost. A nice catch by Devon Smith. Again, we don't score points, but we're able to punt the ball away down the field and, and, and get the ball down on their end of the field, make them play from their end. Again, good pass rush, makes him pull the uh, ball down. And again, uh, you know, they're not, we're not allowing him to play in a rhythm. Good job there on the tip. Anthony Kaysen, Richard, gets the interception. Again, stops him. We come back on a 
Uh, first down, excuse me, a third and long play, third and 19, I believe it was. Jamie does a great job of pulling the ball down and knowing where the sticks are, getting the first down. We come back on a big, big pass play here to Torrey to, for the touchdown to put us up 22 to 7. A uh, big, big play in the game. I know I keep using that term, big play, but there were so many of them. And then we do a great job here on the two-point conversion. Jamie, again, just, you know, taking the lick but getting the ball off completion to Devon Smith to go up 24 to 7. Then our defense rises to the occasion. Again, pressure on the quarterback, makes him pull it down, forces him to run the football. And, uh, again, he gets a little happy feet there because of some pressure. And we force a bad throw. Uh -huh. Interception, our sixth of the day to end the ball game. Well, obviously, just a super victory for the Wolfpack and only the second loss for Florida State since they joined the ACC since 1992. Coach, now it's the opportunity to select our Bell South Yellow Pages Player of the Week. Well, it's a tremendously difficult decision to, to make this week, to try to pull a player or two out of this game and, and give them the Player of the Week. But I two players kind of stick out in my mind at this point in time. One is Torrey Holt. Obviously, he did a tremendous job. Nine catches, 135 yards, two touchdowns. An unbelievable punt return. He made a couple of great catches. But also another young man that... Uh, that did a tremendous job was Jamie Barnett. Jamie is playing with a, you know, a, a knee brace. He kept picking himself up time after time after time. The way those guys hit him, he was 17 of 32 for two touchdowns. Just did a tremendous job of leading and running our offensive football team. All right, two good choices. Coach Jamie Barnett certainly had a great game from his quarterback position and certainly a nice receiving game by Torrey Holt. Now it's time to move on to Let's See That Again, sponsored by our friends at Optometric Eye Care Center, the official eye care provider for the Wolfpack. Late in the first quarter, this punt to Torrey Holt, number 81 picks it off, cuts down the right-hand side in front of the FSU bench, cuts back to midfield, and takes it all the way for 68 yards, and that is the first punt run back against Florida State in 10 years. That's pretty work right there, and the pack stretches its lead to 13 to 7. 